Making a website has never been easier. And in this tutorial, I will show you step by step how you can create your own website. Let me show you what we will cover in this tutorial. I will show you how to get your own .com domain name for free if you don't have one. And then we will install WordPress. WordPress is the most powerful website builder on the web. It powers more than 43% of all the websites in the world and it's free. Then we will create this website from scratch using a free WordPress theme and a free page builder called Elementor. We will not just create a website. We will also talk about branding, choosing the right colors for your website. I will show you which fonts you should use and how to create or outsource your logo. Elementor is a fantastic free page builder that enables you to create your pages using a simple drag and drop method. And I will show you step by step how you can do that. And if you want to change something, just click and then you can adjust the content and you can adjust the style. That is how easy it is. We will use global colors on our website. So if you want to change the colors, they will change on the whole website. So with a few clicks, you can change the look and feel of your website. With the header, you can create something like this, but also like this or this. You can make your whole header sticky or just a part of it. And you can make parts of your header transparent like this or like this. And when you scroll, you can add a different logo. And it's all really simple to set it up like this. I will also show you how to create all these pages from scratch. So this is how my homepage looks. But with the skills I teach you in this tutorial, you can also make pages like this. Or like this. Or like this. And of course, the website we will make will be optimized for all devices. For desktops, tablets and smartphones. And if you want to, you can learn how to create blog posts on your website. So you can be found through organic search results, which can help you to get more clients. I will also show you how to create a portfolio page and showcase your work. We'll talk about creating the right title for your website, finding high quality images, add external plugins to give your website more functionalities, like extra Elementor elements, or a contact form so people can reach out to you. And we'll save parts of our designs in our website so we can use it again and again and save time. I will also show you how to copy and paste whole areas in your website with a few clicks. When you watch this tutorial and you follow all the steps, you'll be able to create an amazing professional website and not only that, you can start to make websites for others and generate the extra source of income. Tons of people who have watched my tutorials say that they can do this now for a living. So you can be the next. Well, let me show you two more practical things. In the description of this video, I have timestamps. So if you want to go to a certain part in the tutorial, you can click on one of those timestamps and you go directly to that part of the tutorial. When I go to fast for you, you can go to the settings here at YouTube, playback speed, slow down the speed of this tutorial. And if you want to go back a few seconds in the video, just hit the left arrow on your keyboard and you'll go back five seconds in the video. If you can appreciate that I made this video for free, then please like this video and feel free to subscribe for more upcoming free WordPress related tutorials. And now let's take a look at the three steps we will take in this tutorial. So first you get your free domain name and we will get web hosting. What is a domain name? A domain name is the address of your website. Web hosting is a special computer that's turned on 24 seven that contains all your files, all your emails, all your images, all the content on your website. So with your free domain name and web hosting, you are visible on the internet. Then we will install WordPress and WordPress is completely free. It's the best tool to create a website without having to know anything about coding because WordPress is doing all the hard stuff for you. And then the third thing, you will create your website and for the website we will make, people can charge thousands of dollars, but I will show you for free how you can do it yourself. If you already have a domain and web hosting, you can do two things. You can migrate your current website to this amazing web hosting platform. I have a tutorial here that can show you step by step how you can do that. And if you already have installed WordPress, you can skip step two and go directly to step three. And I will show you right now where you need to go in the tutorial in order to follow along from that point on. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. So in order to get your free domain and web hosting, we need to go to webhosting28.com. Hit enter. I love hosting her and I'm not the only one. If you take a look at all the reviews at Trustpilot, you see that people are really excited about hosting her. And if you take a look at the Google Trends, you see the word is spreading. More and more people are getting into hosting her and they're really excited, just as I am. So if you want to get started, we click on start now and you see there are four plans. And I can tell you all the plans are really fast. And it's maybe a little bit overwhelming, four different plans, but I will show you which plan is right for you. You can get started with one website and then you pay less than $2 per month. The only thing is you don't get a free domain name with this plan. If you take a look at the most popular plan, the WordPress starter plan, you can create up to 100 websites in this plan. You have 100 gigabyte of SSD storage, which is more than enough. And you can have up to 25,000 visits per month. 
And over here you see you get your free domain. The big difference between the WordPress starter plan and the business WordPress plan is that you can have more gigabyte storage, but I don't think you need those extra 100 gigabytes. I think this is enough for 100 websites, but you can have more monthly visits, but you can always upgrade later. So when you reach 25,000 visits per month, you can upgrade to the business WordPress plan. And if you know already you want to start an agency, you want to create 50 websites in the first year, then I suggest the cloud startup. And the crazy thing is this is really affordable for cloud hosting. As I said, you can always upgrade later. And two more important things to say, all plans are blazing fast. The only thing is the higher the plan, the more websites you can have up and running at the same time and still maintain the super fast speed of your websites. So if you know you want to create 50 websites in the first year, then I definitely suggest you go for the cloud startup. But if you want to create one website or two or maybe five or 10, I suggest you go with the WordPress starter plan. And then when you reach 25,000 visits per month, and I hope that will be the case for you, you can always upgrade later. And the second thing I want to tell you, there is a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you somehow, I don't know why, but if you somehow would not like the service, you can get your money back. No questions asked. So it's totally risk free. And I will show you step by step how you can create your first website. So I select the WordPress starter plan. I click on select. And now we can take a look at the amount of discount we get. And the great thing with hosting is if you are really sure you want to go for a few years with your first website, you can get the discount of $2.99 for four years, for 48 months. And that will save you $432. And then after those four years, you start to pay $6.99, which is still super affordable for a web hosting plan that can hold 100 websites. If you just want to start with two years or one year, you can click over here. And then in your first year, you just pay $2.99 per month. And then you're still going to create 100 websites. And after that first year, you start to pay $8.99 per month. So the longer the first period, the more discount you will get when you renew your plan. So if you have the budget and you want to get the most discount possible, you can go for the 48 months. And after those 48 months, you start to pay around $7 per month instead of $9. But wait, there is more. If you scroll down over here, you see have a coupon code. And if you fill in 30 and you click on apply, you get even more discount. So I scroll up again. Now you see $2.69 for the first 48 months or 24 months or 12 months. I go for 12 months. I scroll down and I need to create an account. So I will fill in my email address over here. And of course you need to have access to this account. Then I scroll down a bit further. And the great thing is with Hostinger, you have local payment methods. So if I'm from the Netherlands and I go to Hostinger, I can pay with IDL, which is in the Netherlands, the main payment method. If you're from India, you also have local payment methods. And that's the great thing about hosting or depending on where you come from, there are more payment methods. I want to pay with credit card and let's see what we have over here. We have the WordPress starter plan for 12 months. We can have up to 100 websites. Our first domain is completely free instead of $10. We get a lot of discount and the total amount I have to pay is just $32.29. It can be that it's a little bit more because of the taxes, depending on where you come from, but this is so affordable. So what I will do, I'll scroll down. I will fill in my credit card details. And as you see a 30 day money back guarantee and I click on submit secure payment. It's redirecting us to the control panel. Now we need to create a password for our hosting account. We need to confirm our password and then I click on confirm. Now they are going to ask a few questions. I click on start now and then I want to skip those questions. So I click on skip. I want to create my first WordPress account. So I can use my administrator email and then I need to create a password and then I click on continue. I don't want to have those plugins on my WordPress website. I want to start from scratch. So I click on skip. I will manage plugins later. I don't need to have a certain look. I want to start from scratch. So I scroll down, I click on skip. I don't need a template. Now I can claim my free domain name. So I click over here and then I select my domain name. I want to go for a .com. You see all those extensions they have. I go for .com and if it's already taken, be creative with another domain name because you definitely want to have a .com domain name, especially when you're into international business. If you're from a local business, check out if your country extension is over here, but I want to go for .com and then I can enter my desired domain name. I go for we are web divine. Let's see if it's still available. I click on search and it is available. So I click on continue and now WordPress will be installed on this brand new domain name, which is completely free. I click on finish setup and then I need to fill in some details for my 
domain name. The question is, where do you come from? I'm from the Netherlands. And did you buy this web hosting personally or because you're a company? I choose personal. So I click on next step. And then I need to fill in my details over here. So there I go. My first name, my last name, my email. In the Netherlands, I'm from South Holland. My city, my address, space, and my phone number. And then I click on finish registration. Now our domain will be registered. And the great thing is this is crazy with Hostinger. Automatically your information, your email and your phone number, which you just filled in is secure. It's, it's hidden. It cannot be seen by companies that want to advertise to you, that want to call you. That's called domain privacy. And with Hostinger, that is free. With other web hosting companies, this can cost $20 per year. Here it's free. So now we can edit our website, it's live already, or we can go to the control panel. Well, I first want to go to the control panel, so I click on manage site. Then I want to go to the WordPress dashboard, and maybe this looks overwhelming, but you're going to be fine. We don't have to spend a lot of time over here, and the more you do, the easier it becomes. I really like this layout. So you click on WordPress dashboard, and what I want to do, I want to force the HTTPS, so our website will be secure like this. So I turn that on and it's for this domain name. So I click on install SSL and it says your SSL is being installed for your domain name in the background. HTTPS will be automatically forced on your domain. Then we click here on edit a website and ladies and gentlemen, look at this. We will be redirected to our own brand new domain name with web hosting with WordPress installed on it. Great. So now we are logged in. You just need to close this, click on the WordPress logo. Okay, then we need to go to our dashboard. Look at this. This is the back end of our website. This is what we will see when we are logged in. And when you're logged in, you can adjust things in your website. If you click over here on the house, you go to the front end of your website and you see you are live already. Your website is secure. So everybody that goes to your domain at this moment will see this over here. And that means you are live. We have this bar over here. That means that you're logged in. And when you want to go to the back end of your website, just click over here on your domain link. Let me show you around a little bit. When you use WordPress and use WordPress plugins, you will have updates. So if I click on updates right now, there's a plugin that needs an update. So I can select it and I can update the plugin. Every time there's an update, you will see it over here. Or when you're on the front end, you'll see a one over here. I go back to the back end. We can create blog posts. We can upload PDFs, images, Word documents, videos. We can create pages, the homepage, the about page. People can leave comments on your pages or blog posts or products if you have them. And here you can moderate those. Let me skip this for now. If I go to plugins, I see there's a plugin called WP Forms Lite. And some plugins, when they're active, also appear here at the left hand. This one, for instance. Then we have appearance. We can change the look and feel of our website. We can add users so we can create a user that only can write blog posts on our websites or only moderate our posts or moderate the information we have on our website. We have our WordPress settings and also this is a plugin. I like to work in a clean up environment and also when it comes to WordPress, I want to work in a tidy space. So right now WordPress is a little bit messy. There are a lot of plugins, a lot of things we don't need. And I want to clean it up so I can work better. So let me show you how to clean up your WordPress website. And while we are doing that, I will also show you a few configurations we can configure. In order to do that, I need to I make sure I'm here at the dashboard and I want to dismiss this message. And all this stuff over here, I don't need it. So I go to the screen options and I uncheck them all. Then I go to all the plugins. Click here, so I select all the plugins and then I go to the bulk actions. And that means I can adjust everything at once. Everything I've selected, bulk actions, deactivate all plugins. And in order to do that, I need to click on apply. Then I select them again, bulk actions, delete, apply. Hit enter or say OK. And there they go. Now, if I go to the website, and I go to this blog post. It's on every WordPress installation. If I click on it, look at this. You go to your domain name and then question mark P equals one. I don't like that. And Google does not like it either. So I need to go to the back end. I want to change the way it is displayed. So I go to the settings, permalinks. 
and I change the permalink structure from plain to post name. I scroll down and I click on save the changes. Now, if I go to the website and I click on hello world, look at this looks so much better. Hello world. What else can we do right now? It says this post is created by hello at 30 corpse.com. I want to change that in order to do that. I go over here and I edit my profile. You can change the look and feel of the backend. I like the default one. I scroll down a bit and I want to fill in my first name over here, 30 and my last name over here. And then here at display name publicity, I want to change it to my first and last name. So if I select that, look at this. Now it says how the 30 corpus look. Right now, we don't see an image over here. If you want that, let me first update my profile. If I scroll down, look at this. I can have a profile picture. It needs to be linked to my Gravatar account. So in order to have an image over here, you need to create a Gravatar account. It costs around $50 per month, but it's really worth it. No, just kidding. It's free. Right mouse click, open link and a new tab. Then you can create your Gravatar and then you need to upload an image. And when you do that, it will appear on multiple places in your website, but right now only over here. I update my profile. So now it says, how do you the corpus hook? And I see my image. What I want to do, I want to go to settings general. Since our website is secure, I want to have an S over here. So HTTPS, HTTPS. I scroll down and I need to save the changes and then I need to log in again, probably. So I lose, use my email address, which I use to sign up for my WordPress website information we have filled in over here and my password. Then I scroll down. I can change the site language to something else and I can change this time zone. So I want to change it to my city. I live near Amsterdam. So you can just hit a big city and you can also take a look over here, which one you can decide. And then summertime, winter time, everything will be changed automatically. How do you want to display your date? I can say 22, 12, 27. You can choose one. I use this one and the time format. I like to work with AM and PM in capitals. So I select this one. My week starts on Monday and I click on save changes. Great. If you want to be found better in the search results of Google and other search engines, it's really important to have a good site title with a lot of keywords where you want to be found on. So let me show you how to create a super duper cool site title that will help you to be found on the internet. Right now, the title of our website is we are web You also see that over here, but if there are people that want a website, they do not search for, we are web because they don't know about us. They search for web design company and then probably web design, Sydney web design, New York based on where they live. So if I would search for web design, Los Angeles, and I skip the ads, what I see over here. You see web designers, Los Angeles, web designers, Los Angeles. So this is the title of the website. If I change this title over here, that is what you will see over here in Google. These are a lot of uh, websites that show a lot of different companies, but I'm searching for a web design company website. And that is this one, Los Angeles web design. So you see the keywords where people are searching for, they are here at the left and the more to the left they are, the better you will be found. So here, Los Angeles web design, the two keywords, Los Angeles and web design. That's what I want to be found on because when people search for that, I want to appear in those search results, the name of the company, and then Los Angeles web design agency, Los Angeles web design company, Los Angeles web design. So you see when you search for web design, Los Angeles, same is for Sydney. Let me <laughs> correct that. I skip the ads. Top, top, top. Okay, Jimmy Webb, Web Design Sydney, Web Design Sydney, Web Design Agencies, Web Design Sydney. So it's really important to use keywords in your title. So instead, well, let's go to the back end, to Settings General. We can go to the site title. Instead of saying, We are Web Divine, welcome to our website. We should have keywords in our title. If you want to have a website, you're not going to search for welcome to this website. No, you're searching for web design and then where you live. So that's what I also want to do. I want to say web design, my most important keyword, and then in Los Angeles, and then I can say, or my company name, 
web design or more than 23 years of experience. Something that needs to trigger people to go to my website instead of to another website in the search results. So what is a compelling title if I search for web design New York? What I always do, I try not to copy, but I get inspired from other titles. So there's a top website. Okay. Web design company and SEO marketing agency. So that's also something I can say web design in Los Angeles and SEO because people want to be found. New York web design, number one freelance website designer, thrive internet marketing agency. So web design Los Angeles or web design agency Los Angeles 23 plus years of experience or all in one packages like we're going to do the branding the logo everything you need to trigger people to go to your website then there's the tagline in a few words explain what the site is about you will not see this anywhere in your website you can leave it empty or you can fill this in. We create highly converting websites using the best tools. Okay, so that's the title and the tagline. And if I save it, look at this. Now, if I go to the website, it changes over here. Web Design Agency Los Angeles. Web Design Agency Los Angeles, all in one packages. This is important to have a great title when you create a website you need to have a few colors you want to use don't go all over the place with a lot of different colors because they are your favorite colors now you need to think about what you want to display on your website your website needs to represent your company and it can also be done in the colors in the fonts in the images so think about the style you want to have for your website there are a lot of things you can do you can google for branding colors Go to images and you see a lot of nice tools. For instance, this one, a lot of companies with certain logos. What are they expressing? Do you want to express trust or peace, optimism? And then you often see, you see that over here, uh, people use with color palettes. So not one color in your website, but three colors or three to five colors. So if you want to get inspired, search for the website you want to create. So maybe you want to create a bike website bike shop sydney what i will do i will go to all websites scroll down click over here just take a look at the style those websites are in the top ranking of google so they must be doing something great so maybe you want to work with the color red and then a few colors that are completing that color or green maybe you are talking about electric bikes or orange, blue. So when you know what kind of colors you want to use, what you can do, you can go to coolars.co and then start the generator. Then you can play around with all those colors. So you can just hit space when you see color you like for your website, you can lock it. And then based on this color here, new colors will appear that are a great combination with this color. So. There you go. You can lock this one. What I prefer to do is have a head color, the, 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 the major color in your website, then a secondary color that is different, this one for instance, and then a light version of this one. And if this will be dark color, also a lighter version. So I would have a light version of this. So I can also copy this, go to the third one, paste it. And if I want to go for the lighter version, Go like this. Then I can lock it, place enter. And if I don't like it, I can also change this one. And then a different color, maybe more uh, in the warm area. So what I have, I have the, the head color, which is dark green or dark blue. So the head color, then the secondary color, let me drag it to the left. Then there's a lighter version of this one and an even lighter version. 
And then I also can have a light version of this one. And then I can play around with that. Okay, maybe I'm, I'm rushing a little bit through it, like uh, just uh, pick a few colors, press space, and then lock them, and then you're done. But please, take your time, because branding is really important. Take your time to find the right colors. Go to a lot of websites, maybe of competitors, maybe of other people, to, to get a feel, feeling of what kind of websites use what kind of colors. And there's no one perfect color, but take your time. And at the other hand, when you have found your colors, I will implement them in our website in a way that we, we can change them later. And then all the colors in the website will change in a few clicks. That's really amazing. So you can always change it later. So but the, take your time. And at the same time, you can always change it later. Yes. Okay. I think you can continue with that. If you're happy with those colors, you can export them as a PDF. And I can call this one web divine two. And I export it. Look at this. This is what we can use in our website. How great is that? Let's talk about themes. With a theme, you can change the look and feel of your website. So the, the content on your website stays the same. But if you change the theme, the content will stay the same, but the look and feel will change. And every theme has their own special abilities. So there are themes that have not that much abilities. There are themes that have a lot of abilities or capabilities or however you want to call them functionalities. And I found the best free theme you can use that has a lot of amazing pro features. So I've, I've talked about features, about capabilities, about functionalities. I all, well, with all, I mean the same. So I found the Bloxy theme. It's in my opinion, the best free theme you can use. There's a pro version, but in this tutorial, we're going to make use of the free version and it's amazing what you can do with it. And I will show you step-by-step step how, but first let me show you how to get the Bloxy theme. Right now, our website looks like this and I really don't like it. Of course, we don't have a lot of information on our website, but the way it is displayed is based on the theme we use. What is a theme? A theme decides the look and feel of your website and every theme has their own functionalities. There are free themes and premium themes. And I want to show you uh, what I mean by that. So I go to the back end. Then I go to appearance themes and I see we have three themes by default. They all have a different color. So right now 2023 is active. If I activate 2021, look at this. I go to the website. Now I have the same information, the title and the subtitle, but the, the style is different. Everything looks different. And that's what a theme does. It decides the look and feel of your website. I've done a lot of research and I found the best free WordPress theme there is. And in order to get it for free, you go to ferdycorp.com forward slash Bloxy. You hit enter and then you see there is a pro version and there's a free version. And if I click on free download, we can download it over here. Let me close this, close this. Then I can go to the back end of our website and we can go to appearance themes. I can click on add new. Then I can click on upload theme and I can drag it over here and then I can install it. What we also can do, we can go to appearance themes, add new, and then just search over here. So I search for Bloxy and either way it's fine. So I hover over here and I click on install I Can remove this now. And then I activate the theme. Then we need to scroll down to downloads and we need to go for the Bloxy companion. So we have a Bloxy theme and a Bloxy companion plugin and those two combined is fireworks. So I click on install Bloxy companion. Now it's active. Great. So if I go to my website, look at this, the style is different. It's not that appealing yet, but this is a great foundation to build on and to make your website look so much better. What I want to do now. I want to upload my logo and I want to upload my fave icon. And maybe you don't have those. Well, let me show you how you can create those. I have tutorials about that. So what I want to do now, I want to upload our logo and our fave icon. If I would go to apple.com and then in a new tab, I go to tesla.com. I see two fave icons. The one from Tesla is over here and the one from Apple is over here. I have this. I want to upload my own fave icon. 
And I want to show you how to do that. And what I suggest you do, you can make your favorite icon yourself. I have tutorials about that. You can also create your own logo. If you search on YouTube for make a logo 30 over here, I have tutorials on how to do it yourself. As you see over here, I suggest you outsource it. You can do that at uh, 30 corp.com forward slash Fiverr or true upwork.com. Just hire someone that can create a logo for you. Uh, I know I should not create my own logos because, or they are basic, which is sometimes fine, but I don't seem to have a lot of creativity in that part. So I outsourced it. A friend of mine created my logo. So I, I want to upload that one. So this logo, a friend of mine created for me true in, in Figma. And it gave me a lot of options. So what I can do then I can select this and design, I can export it. And even if I am like, Hey, you know what? I'll create a different color. I can do that over here and then it looks like this. And then I can export it as an SVG and with the Bloxy theme, you can import logos through SVG. And what does it mean when you use SVG, the, the quality of our logo stays the same. So if I would uh, click on the plus, you see that the quality stays perfectly fine. And with a PNG, that's not the case. So if you can, I suggest you use an SVG file for the fave icon, you can use a PNG file. So I have my logos already and in order to upload them, I go to the customizer and I hover over here on the three points here at the title, because that's the logo area. Then I select my logo. And then I can upload a file. So I click on select files and there I see web design and I go to the branding and I have my logo, which is an SVG file, just 12 kilobytes. I open it. I want to copy the title, place it in the alt text and in the description. And I select it as my logo below my logo. I have the site title. I don't want that. So over here at the settings at the site title, I turn this off. Great. Now we have our logo over here. If I want to upload my fave icon, I go back and I go back to the settings of the theme. These are the theme settings and there are a lot of extra functionalities within the free Bloxy theme. And then here below we have some core WordPress settings and I go to the site identity and then I can change the site icon. And I select it. I upload a file, select files from my computer. And I go for the fave icon. Open. Then I click on select. Crop the image. And voila, it's over here. If I click on publish and I close it, we have our logo over here and we have our fave icon over here. So if I'm on a different page and I want to go to my website again, I see, hey, there I need to go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to take a look at pages and our menu. I'll show you how to do it, but really important to think about what you want to display on your website. We do not just create pages because we can. Now we have to think what kind of pages we want on our website. And if you want to ask yourself that question, you need to ask yourself the question, what is the goal of your website? And then think about all the pages you have in mind and think, Hey, is this page contributing to that goal or not? We don't need tons of pages just because. So uh, I will dive a little bit deeper into that. So let me show you how to add pages, how to add a menu, and then how to find out what kind of pages you can add to your website. Right now I want to do two things over here. It says ready to publish your first post. Well, why is it saying this and not showing a static homepage? Well, when WordPress started out, it was a blogging tool and then a lot of additions were added and now it's a complete website builder, but that's why it's still here ready to publish your first post so we can showcase our latest post on our homepage. I don't want that. I want to show my homepage on the homepage. So in order to do that, I will create a few pages and let me show you how to do that. I go to the customizer by clicking here. Then I scroll down all the way. I go to the menus and I want to create a new menu. That's the second thing I want to do a menu with menu items that link to all the pages I want to create. So I click on create a new menu and I call this one main menu. And that's just for the reference that name. So you can call it anything you want. I like to call it the main menu and I want to link it to the main menu area, which is this area. 
Then I click on next. Now I can add items. So I click on add items and now I can create a new page. Well, of course we want to have a home page. So the first page I call it home. Now I click on add and I do two things at the same time. I create a page and that page will be added. Let me make this smaller to the menu. So again, I can add more items. And the question is really important question. What do you want to place in your menu? And then the deeper question is, yeah, we're going to get into the deep stuff. What is the goal of your website? If the goal of your website is to get new customers, you should not say in your menu, my uncle went to Australia, went to Australia. He liked it and then add it as a page. Because that has nothing to do with the goal of your website. So think about what you want to place in your header. I'm going to get rid of this, of course. I need to remove the page later. So what you can do if you want to get inspired, think about the website you want to create. In my case, it's about the web design agency. For you, it can be a plumber website. So I searched for plumber in Cape Town. Plumber. And let me get to this website. I can also open the other ones. So what do they have in their heading about themselves, the services they offer? A blog and a contact us page. Okay, really interesting. So something about ourselves. So what I can do, I can create a page. It's called about. People want to know more about who you are. So we have a homepage and an about page. And that page will be shown over here. If I click over here, you see the home and about. I add another item. Let me take a look at another website. Home services again about and contact also here about us installations maintenance gallery testimonials contact plumbing emergency so what i say over here is services i add it as a page okay but i have a few services i offer and i want to have those as sub items of the services page how can i do that well i just add them as a page so what i do is branding that's one of the services i offer creating a logo, creating a branding. Then we do the web design. Then we do the development. The latest thing is optimization. But I don't want to place them all in the menu over here. So what I can do, look at this. Here's the services page. I want to drag it a little bit to the right until it snaps. And then I release it. Same with web design, development, optimization and now look at this all those pages are hidden over here i don't see it yet so i close it look at this there they are well we're going to take a look at those colors later but that's how you can create a menu with a sub menu it's looking clean that's how i want to keep it throughout the whole website i want my website to be clean with one goal to get new clients and i can help those clients to get an amazing website that will bring them more clients that's the whole goal so I go to the customizer. What else did I see? The services, a block. We can create a block. So I go to the menus, main menu, add items. I want to create a new page called block. What else do I want? I want to have a portfolio. I understand that a plumber doesn't have a portfolio, but if I would search for web design agency, London, and I go for a few websites, our work, it's other way of saying a portfolio, portfolio, recent work, our services, recent projects. So you can decide how you want to call this. It can be portfolio. It can be cases. It can be our work. Let's do that one. And I want to have a contact page so people can reach out to us. So this is how it looks right now. If you want to change something, I want to say our work above blog. That's how easy it is to do. What else can we do? I close this. I go to the back end. And if I hover over here, I can go to the menus. So now we see our menu over here. And what I can do, I can add custom links. So I can say HP. S30 Corpus Hook 
Cinemaphotography.com and say my inspiration. I can add it to the menu and it will be added. If I save it and I go to the website and I click over here, I go to my website. Okay, let's go back to the menus. I want to get rid of that. Remove. And if you don't have more options over here, right now we can add pages, blog posts, custom links, and categories. Over here, there are screen options. And you can have tags, link targets, title attributes, show more stuff. I never go into this, but if you want that, you can turn it on over here. Save the menu. And now we have our logo and our menu. Then I go to the customizer. And what I see when I go to a website, where's the homepage? Where's the homepage in our menu? No homepage. Here it is because it's a fly in menu. Also, here, home. Home. A lot of homes. Well, sorry, but I don't want that. Let me close those. I go to the menus and I want to get rid of the homepage because by now people should know when you click on the logo, you go to the homepage. One more thing, right now it says ready to publish your first post. I don't want to place this over here, so I go back. Back, I want to place my homepage over here. So I scroll down, I go to the homepage settings in the core area. And I change the display from our latest post to a static page, and then I select the homepage. The second thing we want to do, the blog page, I want to link it to the blog page. That means that the Bloxy theme will define the style of the blog page. And I can tell you, Boxy does an amazing job with that and you can customize everything. We're gonna talk about it later. I publish it, I close it, and now you don't see, ready to see your first post, but you see the homepage. So, so far, so good. Before we created some colors using coolers.co, I hope you did it and you have your PDF with all those colors. What I want to do now, I want to implement those colors into our website so we can use them in our whole website. And let me show you how to do that. Before we continue with our header, I want to take a look at the colors because right now, if I hover over here, I see blue colors and a dark color over here. And this color is lighter. I don't want to use those colors. So how can we use certain colors in our website? Again, I go to the customizer and then we can go to colors. Look at this. There's a global color palette and by default, Bloxy gives the main color palette these colors but look at this if i change this, you don't see a lot of change because there are not so many colors attached to those colors but you see this becomes green but now let me show you the power if i go to a color palette with dark colors look at this the whole look and feel of our website changes so if you want to create a dark website you can change it in a matter of seconds and this is so powerful because maybe you're working on a website you have created a lot of different aspects already and then you think, hey, I want to change the colors. Then you need to change all those colors in the websites. I've done that. I've, I've played around like crazy with copying, pasting in the whole database stuff. Does it sound complicated? Well, it was a little bit. But now with this, it's quite easy to change colors in your website. So those are the global colors. And over here throughout the website, I can link all those colors to global colors. And that means when I change one of these colors, It changes everywhere on every place where I decided to use one of those global colors. That is super powerful. So what I will do, I go to color palette one. I want to make use of my color palette, which we have made in coolors.co. So I go to my homepage to branding and grab my PDF. So I grab my first color, which is this one, copy it. Then I go over here. I paste it and look at this. When I do that, look at those colors over here. It changed. Then the second color. I paste over here. Really important that you keep the hashtag there. Otherwise, the color will not work. Okay, that's the second color. You see it over here. Third color. I want to place it here at the dark area color four. Okay, and the lighter color, I want to place it over here, 
light orange. And light green, light blue. Place it over here. And this is nothing. And this is white. So what I want to do, I want to make the use the third color as black. If I want to use perfect black, I can use color three. And color seven, I leave it for what it is. So now I can go throughout the whole website. So let me go to the header, to the menu, to design. I see those colors over here and I can choose those global colors. And then whenever I change the global colors, this color will change. That will speed up your workflow. So let me publish it and close it. And now we are ready to change the colors in our website. As I said before, with the Bloxy theme, you can do a lot of things. So what I want to do now, I want to show you how you can adjust the header in the Bloxy theme. Right now, I will show you what you can do with the header. There are a lot of possibilities. And before I do that, I want to make the home page background dark so we can see better what is possible with the header. So I go to the customizer. Then I go to colors, I scroll all the way down and then I grab this dark color. Look at that. That's what I want. Now we can see the height of the header and I can show you more beautiful things. Let me publish it. Now I go back and I go to the header. Okay. What you see over here, there are three rows, the top row, the main row and the bottom row. And in every row, there are three areas, the left, center and the right. Well, right now you don't see it because I have no elements in the middle area. But if I drag the menu to the center, look at this. I see nine dots. And I see that the menu goes to the center. And here at the left, we see elements. So maybe I want to have a button. I can drag the button to one of those nine areas, for instance, left at the top. And what you see, as soon as I place an element in the top row, there appears a new row. If I click on the button, I can change everything. I can make it bigger. I can change the label to contact. I can change the link. I can let it open in a new tab so I can adjust things over here. And then at the design area, I can change colors for the button, but it is also possible to change the row settings. So over here, when I hover over it, I can change the main row settings, the bottom row settings and the top row settings. So I can go to the top row. I can go to design background and change that to the green one. Then I can go to general and I can change the height so I can make it smaller. Well, since there's a button, it has a minimum of the height of the button. So if I get rid of the button and I go for some HTML text, look at this. Now it is smaller. Now the text is dark on a dark background. In order to fix that, I click on the HTML. Then I go to the design tab of HTML. I change the font color to the white one. And then at general, I can change the content. So at general, you can change content. At the design, you can change the design. So if I go to the menu, here I can change the settings. And then at design, I can change how it looks. So I click over here and I can say contact us at And that number, for instance, then at design, I can say, hey, this should be smaller. Then I go back. I can have a second menu. I can have socials. I drag them over here to the right. And they're black. I don't want that. I click on socials. I go to design and I change them to white. And when people hover over it, I want them to be orange. So here's the initial color. When I hover over hover, you see hover. And then it becomes orange. What else? I can go back and then the search area. Right now it's here. I can drag it over here. I can change the color to white. Look at this. Right now it's white. I'm going to hover over it. It's orange. And then it matches with this area. Then I can go to design. Uncheck this. So at the left, I can increase or decrease it so I can make it look like it's one of the four icons with the same space in between each icon. So we can make it pixel perfect as we want it to be. I go to HTML, go to design, make it a bit 
bigger. Change the text. But it's really nice. What we can do, we can also have that lower area. Menu 2 in the center over here. So now we have three areas. And then over here, I can also change a lot of things. But the question is not what we can do. The question is what should we do? Because it's really nice that there are so many possibilities. But we need to keep in mind what is the goal of your website. And everything in your website should reflect that. So it's really nice that people can go to our Facebook and our Twitter and our Instagram. But does it really help you to get more clients if that's the goal of your website? Well, in my opinion, it is not. On my website, I will show people what I can do so they don't have to go to my social media accounts to see what I can do for them. So I get rid of it. I will have a website with a few pages and a few portfolio items where I showcase my work. Do people need to be able to search on my website? No. So I get rid of that. If I have nothing here at the right, it's a little bit weird to have the menu in the center. So I drag the menu to the right and I don't need this secondary menu. So I close it. And the question is, uh, it's up to you if you want to have the contact us area over here. And if people can create an account on your website, you can drag it over here. It can be nice. And then when you're logged in, you see that over here. Of course, you can also configure this. And then again, if I want to change this over here, the, the colors and stuff, I can click on the main row settings or over here, main row. And then I can change how it looks right now. By default, it looks like this and I can make it boxed and then it is closer to each other. And I can also make it full width. That means it's totally from the left of the screen to the right. So if I make the screen smaller, come on minus totally from the left to the right. I prefer the default version. Like that, command zero, control zero, and I can change the row height. Well, I think it's taking a lot of space and I'd rather use that space to showcase what I have on my homepage. So I minimize it a bit, bring it down until I'm satisfied. And I think 60 pixels is perfect. So if I publish it, close it, it looks like this and that's great. When I think about branding, I think about colors and I think about fonts. Well, we have not yet talked about fonts, so that's why I want to do that right now. Let's talk about fonts. Now I want to take a look at the fonts on our website right now. This is a default font and I want to use another one. Well, the font is a really important part of your brand. So don't take this lightly. Think about what kind of font you want to have. If I go to fonts.google.com. You can type something over here. So what I can do, I can copy this whole part, copy, paste it over here, type something. And the question is, how do I want to display those fonts over here? Well, if I have a web design company, I don't want to use Rubik 80s fade. If I would do that, let me go to the customizer and I click over here on the three dots. That means that I go directly to the menu element. I go to design over here and change the default family to Rubik. Well, let's say beastly or burnt. Look at this. That has nothing to do with what I want to express as a company. I'm a web design company. I'm about great designs that fit the branding of my website. This doesn't fit. And what I would do if I were you just go to other websites. In my case, web design agency Amsterdam take a look at a few websites and see what they are doing so this font is used I see that the font is quite big the font size okay nice clean and clean font capitals okay here you see a, a serif font let me explain in a minute what it is. So you can get inspired. And let me show you the difference between uh, serif and sans serif. So if I say serif, serif, sorry, serif versus sans serif, I go to images. It's French, sans for uh, without. Here's a great example. Serif is with those, how do you say that, extensions? <laughs> 
And sans serif is just clean without those things over here. You can use those in your website, serifs, but normally when you do that, it's a little bit more a special website or art website. And what I would do, what I always do, I would say website examples with serif. The internet is amazing. And then you can see also here at images, how it can look. Adventure reimagined. This is a serif font. The great thing is you can combine it with sans serif also here. So it's up to you. Like this is also something you can do. So this is possible, but normally for, for the website I have in mind, I think it's better to use a sans serif. So over here I can search fonts, but I can also search based by on category. So I can say I only search for sans serif and I also do not use handwriting. Otherwise you get this. I don't want this to be in my menu. So I say sans serif. And then I start scrolling. By the way, if I take a look at my logo, it has a point on the eye and it's a square. So what I also will do, I place an eye in the text so I can see if the uh, text I want to use, the fonts, if they are square. So I can use Oswald, but I don't like the, the font. I think it's not a fit for what I want to do. Real way, I like that font. We need those sans. Yes, this is it. This is the clean font I'm looking for. And the great thing is that the Google fonts are all free. So what I can do, I can go for Nunito Sans. And there you see it. Services, our work, block, contact. Okay. What I also see is everything is in capitals. So if I want to change that, this is not in capitals. So I want to click on the three dots. Normally I like capitals. Uh, you see it in a lot of websites, but since my logo is without capitals, I want to maintain that style over here. But I see every first letter is a capital. That's because I decided to do that when I was creating those pages, which is totally normal. I do not consider myself to be a CSS guru. My latest course about CSS, which helps you to style your website, I did it in 2007. So I know a little bit about CSS. What I want to show you is how to work with CSS. And we're going to keep it basic. And uh, let me show you what you can do with CSS. If I want to get rid of that, let me show you. I close this. I go to the menu item, right mouse click, inspect. I use Google Chrome for that. I'm not into CSS. I did my last course about CSS in 2007. But what I want to do, let me see. I want to come here. And then I say text transform then transform and then lowercase. And that's what happens now. So what I will do, it's a little bit technical. I copy this whole area or you just can follow along. What I will do, I go to the customizer and you need to type exactly what I type and I will uh, zoom in a little bit so you can see it. Sorry, I'm going too fast. You go to the customizer, you scroll down, then go to additional CSS. And the great thing is it's free with the Bloxy theme with a lot of other free themes. It's not possible. You need to go for the pro version. Here it is free. And if I paste it, look at this. Now it's no capital anymore, but I don't need all this stuff. So I get rid of that. Oh, I only want to leave text transform. So the menu list item is without capitals, lowercase. So I zoom in for you so you can type this text dash transform lowercase publish. So in that way we can use CSS to get what we want. Well, let's go back to the customizer because I don't like this at all right now. I go back to the menu to design and then I make it bigger. Let's see. 18. Okay. That's great. We don't have to talk about line height because there's, there are not multiple lines. So I say zero letter spacing. You can increase it in EM or in pixels. Let's say 1.1 and maybe 17. Okay. I'm happy with this. I click outside of this area. We can take a look at the font colors and I want it to be color four. It's the same color as this color over here. When people hover over it, 
hover. I want it to be orange. Like that. And then over here, we have those other colors. Let me change those. So I scroll down. And then here at the drop down, look at this. If I hover over it, this becomes blue. But I can also change it to a solid color when I hover over it. You don't see that well, but the whole area becomes a different color as you see over here. Or you make it boxed. And then it also covers the background, but except for a border over here. Well, I want to use a solid color. And then I go to the design. And I want to change the font color to white. When I hover over it, I want it still to be white because I want the background color to change. So the item's background color by default, it is this dark color. But if I hover over it, look at this, then I want it to be orange or green. Let's do orange. I don't feel it. I have a better ID. How about we make the background color white? I make the initial color dark. Awesome. And I see there's still capitals over here. So uh, let me fix that in a minute. I go to design. Unito. Sans. And then I also make it bigger. Great. I can have a divider if I want to. I can have a drop down shadow. I can have a border radius of the drop down over here in the corner. But I'm uh, fine. I go back to general. Now when I hover over services, I see those options. I can also say that people need to click in order for this to appear. And that's up to you. I prefer hover because that's the, the standard. And then I go back to the home page. We can go back and inspect this to see how we can uh, use the CSS. What you also can do, we can go to the customizer and we go to the menu, to the main menu. And then over here, we open the page by clicking on the arrow down. And here I can say branding without a capital. Also here, web design, development, and optimization publish and now our sub menu looks different no more capitals so that's okay way we can work and then there's a, a typo make them all the time optimization great okay this is exactly how I want it to look. The question is, do we want this upper area or not? I leave that up to you. But before we uh, remove it or not, I want to show you what else is possible because we can work with a sticky header. If I scroll down now, nothing sticks with me. So let me show you how we can make this header sticky. I think our header looks great already. We can also make it sticky. And that means that when you scroll down, the header goes with you on the top of the page. Let me show you how to configure that. Right now, I want to make our header sticky. And before we do that, I want to make our page a little bit longer because right now our page is not big enough to see the sticky state. So I click on edit the page. Then I go to a new tab and I search for dummy text generator. I click over here, blindtextgenerator.com. And I want to have thousand words into a few paragraphs. I copy this whole text, select all, copy, and I paste it over here. Doesn't matter how it looks right now. I click over here, I go to the website, and now we can scroll. So now we can see if our page is sticky or we can make it sticky. I click on the customizer. Now I go to the header and then to the header step. I click on global header and I want to turn on the sticky functionality and by default only the main row will stick with us so i have my top row over here if i scroll down it does not stick with us but the main row does by default that's what we can do 
I can also say that the main and the top row stick with us like this. But what I see that the color changes over here when I scroll down. That's interesting. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Right now, we just want to talk about the stick area. If you have a third row, we can also make them all sticky, all rows or the main and the bottom row, only the top row like that or only the bottom row. I prefer to only stick the main row with us like this. But there's more we can do. We can have an effect right now by default. It just sticks with us as soon as it reaches the top of our viewport. I can change the effect to slide down. It can be that right now you don't see the effect immediately. So I scroll down and then it will appear. Let's go back to the customizer to the main row or let's go back to the headers, global header, sticky area. You can try all those effects, fade. And you need to save it and check it because here it can be that you don't see it. Right now you do see it. If you scroll down now, it appears like that. It can also be nice or auto hide and show. So when I scroll down, nothing happens. But when I scroll up, then it appears. I prefer the default one. You can also have an offset. So right now it's on the top of our page. We can also create an offset, some offset with 20 pixels. And then you can see behind this area over here. So it's not exactly at the top. And you can enable and disable this on different devices. So for me, it doesn't have to be used on a phone. So I turn it off. If I would go to the phone version and scroll down, it does not stick with us. And if I turn it on by clicking here, it does stick with us. And then I need to get rid of this zero, zero and zero. Publish. As I said before, we want to have a specific goal for our website. Well, my goal is to get clients. So I want to let that call to action. Call to action is a button people can click on in order to take action. They can sign up for an email address. They can call me. They can email me, get in touch with me through a form. They can go to a certain page. I want that call to action to be in my header and I want it to stand out. So let me show you how to create a call to action button in your header. Before we talk about the transparent header, I want to talk about two things. First, I go to the customizer and keep in mind, what is the goal? of your website. My goal is to get new clients that can help by making a website for them and do the branding and do the marketing. So I wanted to be really clear. So right now the goal is for people to reach out to me, say, Hey, I want you to make a website for me. So people can do that by going to the contact page, but it does not stand out. How can I do that? I go back to the header. Look at this. I have a button over here. I can drag it to the right. There it is. I already had it uh, before, so I already have the contact text. I can change the URL to forward slash contact because then people go to the contact page. I don't want them to open it in a new tab. I don't want them to have a no follow link. They always will see it. There's no CSS class. I can change the style, but I want to stand out. So that's why I create this area over here. Then I go to design and at the default state, it is yellow. The text is white. And when I hover over it, I get this color and that's exactly what I want. The button color on the sticky state. It's the same. So I don't need to change anything. I do want to change the border radius and it's up to you. If you want to use border radius or everything, you want everything to be flat right now. It's flat. There's uh, no corner radius. I want to have a corner radius, a border radius. So I say 25 and then you get a button like this. I think it's nice because we also use roundings in our logo and then we can create margin and I don't want it. So we'll, we'll talk about uh, margin and padding later. So now this stands out, but I don't need this anymore. So I go back and I go back and I scroll down all the way to menus. I click over here. I go to the contact page, open it by clicking here, and then I remove it. Great. Publish. Then I go back to the button. 
header button, get rid of the C, the capital C, make the small C. Now, if my font is not as big as the font of my menu, let me see, that one is 18. What I can do, right mouse click, inspect. Over here, I say font size, and I make it 30 pixels so I can see if it's really working. And it is, and then I know it's working and I say 18. So it's as big as this one. Then I copy this whole area, close it, refresh the page. I go to the customizer, to additional CSS, and I paste it and I only want to keep the line font size 18. Publish. Close. Great. As I said before, we will dive deeper into the transparent header. But before we do that, I want to install a page builder so we can I can show you better what you can do with the transparent header. And the page builder we will, we will use is Elementor. Elementor is, in my opinion, the best free page builder there is. I, I use it since 2017. And since that moment, my, my whole WordPress life changed. Making websites became easier than ever before. That's why I use the tool. This tool will always be free. There is a pro version. That's the whole concept. They have something for free. And then if you want to get to the next level, you can get the pro version. So they will always have that uh, free version free. And I will show you right now for free how to install the free version of Elementor. Let's get right to it. In order to get the Elementor page builder, we can go to 30corp.com forward slash Elementor. Hit enter. Then we go to pricing. Page Builder plugin. And I scroll down and I have to say they hide the free version and they make it harder to find it. So, you know what? I think they hide it completely. What we can do now, instead of getting it over here, we can go to our website, to the back end, to plugins, add new. And then I search over here for Elementor. I know Elementor since 2017, they changed my life. They made making websites so much easier. And I'm not the only one, more than 5 million installations, one of the most popular WordPress plugins ever. And I click on install now. Then I activate it. And then we need to do a few more things before we get started. This is something I want to skip. I skip all these steps, skip, skip, skip. And I skip this and I skip this. Then we go to Elementor. And there are a few things I immediately want to show you. First, go to those three lines, go to the user preferences. And I prefer to have an interface that is dark. So I change it from light to dark. And I want to turn on editing handles. If I would click on new, this area, I see three parts. Now I want to duplicate this or I want to remove this. I cannot do that unless I go to the three lines, user preferences, turn on editing handles. And now there are four options. Now I can duplicate it, I can remove it. It's so much easier right now. Over here, those options were not available without those editing handles. So that's what I want to configure. Then I click on publish. Now I've created a page called Elementor 81. Really important, click on the three lines and click on exit. And then you need to choose what should happen when you click on exit. And what I prefer, that's the best thing probably for you also, go to the WP dashboard. As soon as you leave Elementor, you go to the dashboard. When it is this post or all post, you always need to click more to go where you want to go. So I decide the WordPress dashboard, apply. So every time I exit Elementor, I go to the dashboard. Elementor overview. Close this and then I go to the screen options. Check it off. Close this, close this. So we keep it organized. Now I go to Elementor settings. Then the fourth tab experiments and make sure when you scroll down that the Flexbox container is turned on. You can use it on live websites already. I've done that already. It works super fine. Make it active and then save the changes. 
Great. Now, I don't need this element or development developer edition. No, I go to the website. I edit this page. I get rid of all this text by clicking on the text area, three lines or three dots. Remove the paragraph. Oh no, I need to remove them all. You know what? I update it. Instead of using the WordPress page builder, we use Elementor, which is in my opinion far better. The WordPress builder is getting better, but right now Elementor is far ahead. So I click on edit with Elementor. And now I can just remove it all at once. Great. So now we can use Elementor to create our website. It's great. I'm going to show you so much about this amazing tool. The first thing I always want to do is go to those settings over here and change the page layout from default to Elementor full width. It, will, it means that you will get rid of the title and we can have an image that's over the complete width of the website. Update. Now I want to click on the plus for the sake of uh, working with this header and show you what's possible with the transparent header. I want to upload an image. So I will show you really quick how you can do that. I click on the plus, I click on this arrow down area. Then I go to the style. You don't have to understand everything. I'm going to explain everything, but right now I just want to get the job done. I want to upload an image in the background over here. So I go to the style. Then I click on background, background type, classic. I grab an image. You can choose any image. I click over here on upload files, select files. I go to one of the images I have in my website to business and I grab an image, this one. I open it. Then I want to insert the media. There it goes. And I want to go to size cover. And I go to layout. I want to change the minimum height to the viewport height. So I say instead of pixels, VH. I'm going to explain everything, but right now, just trust me that it's good to do this. Here I say 100%. Okay. Right now I want to make our background a bit darker. So I go to the background, I close it. I go to the background overlay so we can have a color or an image over this image. And I want to use a gradient. So I click over here and I choose my first color, which is the green one. And the great thing is we can choose all the colors from our Bloxy theme. And I never use those colors. I always use the colors from my theme. So if I change one color in the theme, it will change everywhere in the website because I only use the global colors. So I choose the dark green color as the first color and then the second color, the really dark color palette four. I can change the angle to 90 from left to the right. And I can also increase the opacity. I will do that so I can show you what is possible. I click on update. And now if I close this by clicking here, exit, I go to the dashboard. Now with one click, I can go to the website or I edit this with Elementor and I click on the I and I go directly to the page. So now let's take a look at the customizer and see what we can do with our transparent header. So we, we have worked a little bit with Elementor and now finally, 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 I can show you how to work with a transparent header. So without me talking about nonsense, let's dive right in. Isn't that what we all want in life? To have a transparent header and just show it to your friends. Say, hey, this is my website. I have a transparent header. Let's continue. I click on the customizer. I close this. Now I go to the header, to headers, global header. I scroll down and there's the option Transparent functionality. So right now when I it's it, the, my page begins here because this is the header and below that begins my page. If I make this transparent, this part shifts towards the top again. So I turn it on. There you go. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, I love this. This is part of a free theme. It drives me crazy in a good way. My wife said to me, Ferdy, you're crazy, but in a good way. And then I said, yes, it's because of the Bloxy theme. And she gave me a kiss on the cheek and we had a moment. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Let's continue. Now look at this. Oh man. Oh wow. What I can do now, I can change all the colors, all the styling for the transparent menu, because right now 
it's ugly. It doesn't look really well. But what I can do, since we have a dark background, I can say, I click on the logo and I can say, you know what? In the transparent state, I want to have a different logo with white text. So I can change it over here, upload files, select files, and through Figma, I exported a logo with white text. You don't see it because it's white. Open, select. Now I get this logo, which is so much better when it comes to visibility. Same with the, the menu. I go to the menu. By default, it is black like this. But right now at design, when I'm in the transparent state, I want it to be white, of course. And when I hover over it, I do nothing because then it will automatically get those colors. So look at this. Look at this. Our menu is still the same, which I like. So this is great. What we also can do. We can go to the main row and especially when you have a light background. Okay. Let me show you first. Let me show you first. I go to Elementor. So I close this. It looks great. When I scroll down, this looks less great. We'll fix it in a minute. I added this page with Elementor. Maybe I do want to have a light background. By the way, right now I cannot reach this because it's behind the header. No problem. I go to the navigator to the container and now I select it. Then I go to the style background. I close it and I remove this part. So uh, I say I don't need it anymore. Now, all of a sudden it's hard to read, but what I can do if you want to use a light background and still want to make use of the transparent functionality, I go to the customizer. I go to the header. Select the main row, go to design and say the transparent state background should be black, but drag it a little bit to the right so people can see through it. Or if you want to maintain the style of your website, make it uh, greenish and a bit lighter. Well, I prefer black. Bring it to the left. So we have the transparent menu light background and we still can make it look like this so that our light areas, our light colors, our light logo still looks great and is readable even when you use a light background. I scroll down and it looks like this. How can we fix that? Go back to the customizer, go to the header or you can go to the logo. Logo default is this color. The transparent logo is this one and the sticky state logo, I want it to be the default logo. So as soon as I scroll down, the logo changes. Well, how about this top area? We can do the same. I can say at the top row, no matter what happens, also when we're at the transparent state, I want this to be green. And when everything would not be sticky, so let's go back. Um, let's go to the header, headers, global header. And let's take the top row with us. And when I see what I see, it becomes white when I scroll down. This is because if I go to the top row, design, it says at the sticky state, the background should be white. And I want it to be green. So it will always stay green when we scroll down. You see? So talking about sticky and transparent, the sky is the limit. I don't need anything else in my header. And it's a free theme. And I love that about them. Really nice guys, the people that make this theme. So I wanted to show you uh, that, that it was possible with that. I don't want to use a top row. So if you want to get rid of the top row, just remove all the elements in it. And now it's gone. And I prefer to use a dark background. And if I use a dark background, I go to the header and then I go to the main row. I go to design. I don't need to use um, any color over here. So I can get rid of it. I choose a color and I can get rid of it. Then of course, that's only uh, a good option when you use a dark background. So then I would go to Elementor and I would make use of the dark overlay. Or I would use, make use of no background at all, only the colors. 
that's also a possibility when I do this. Or when I get rid of all this stuff. Go to the background, remove the image. Go to the gradient and choose the same colors. Bring this to 90. Update. And they have the same effect. Scroll down and it changes. So that's the way the cookie crumbles. I'm really excited about this, what you can do with the header. Our header looks fabulous. But how does it look on a different device, on a tablet or on a phone? Well, let me show you how to configure it in a way that it looks amazing on all devices. How to make it look great on other devices. I go to the customizer. To the tablet view. And then it looks like this. Well, using the header on a tablet or mobile, we can add everything we want. So we can add a button over here. Again, we have those nine areas. So there's a lot we can do. I can also place it over here. Or get rid of it. I want to keep it clean and simple. So what I will do, I will go to the trigger. I can change it, the look and feel. I go to design. And in the default state, I want it to be white. In the transparent state, I also want it to be white. And in the sticky state, I want it to be dark. When I hover over it, I want it to become orange. Also here, orange and or orange yellow. It's a little bit in between. Okay. Then we can go back to uh, the icon size, make it a bit bigger. We can have an outline, solid. We even can have a text a label saying um, menu. But I don't want that. And then when you click on it, this menu appears and we can um, customize this. So I click on mobile menu and I select the menu. That's better. Then by default, I want this to be open. So the sub menu, I want it to be visible. So I un uncheck this. Okay. I can have a uh, vertical spacing. Six. Then I go to design and let's see what I can do over here. I can change this to Nunito Sans. Change the boldness to 600. And also here for the sub menu, Nunito Sans 400. When I hover over it, I want everything to be orange. Also here, orange like that or yellow. What should I say? I said yellow and now I'm saying uh, orange all the time. Great. And if I want to, I can go back and I can add other stuff over here on the mobile or tablet menu. But why should I do that? It's a distraction. So I don't use that. So I'm happy with that. Then I go to the mobile version. Then it looks like this. Great. Web Divine. And now I see those capitals again. If I want to get rid of it, I can do the same thing I did before. Go to menus, main menu. And here at about, I type it in small capitals. Services are work and block. What I can do, let me go to the header of the tablet view. And then here below, I can have that button. So people can go get in touch with us or we can drag it over here. And then on the mobile, looks like that. So no, thank you. Maybe here. No. I drag it over here below. So that's how we can optimize it for all devices. Okay. We have created a beautiful header 
using the Bloxy theme with a lot of functionalities that in other themes are premium. You need to pay for that, but in the Bloxy theme, it is free. I really liked it about the theme. But now it is Elementor time. And Elementor is an amazing free page builder that can enable you to create professional looking websites. And that is what we're going to do. And since, well, they make use of a new way of making websites. Before they used sections. In those sections, you could have columns. And in those columns, you could have elements. And they have changed that to containers. So there's still a container. It looks like a section. But there are no more columns, but there are elements. But they use the Flexbox container. So it works a little bit different. The learning curve is a little bit harder. But I will show you step by step how you can work with this amazing page builder. I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited for you because you're going to learn something new. I hope you will become as excited as I am because you're making your own website. And now, without further ado, let's make a website using Elementor. Before we start to work with Elementor, I want to go back to the customizer and change the background to a light one again. So I click on the customizer. Then I go to colors and all the way down, I bring this back to the white color. No worries about the top header because we're going to make a dark background in Elementor. So I close this. I edit the page with Elementor. And before making a website with Elementor was like this, you click on the plus. You can have a few columns. So you have one big section. Let me make it a little bit uh, higher. Minimum height. This is the section, the blue area. In that blue section, we can have columns, one column, two columns, three columns. I can even duplicate columns. So we have more columns. I can resize them, do stuff. And in those columns, I can add elements, a heading. Go back or a button, come back or a video and I can drag them in any column. It was a really nice way to work in Elementor and it was also great to optimize it for all devices, but the website could become a bit slow because of the whole way it was built up. So this is how you used to make websites in Elementor with sections. In those sections, you would have columns and in those columns, you would have elements. But now we work with containers. What happens with containers, we get rid of the column area. Columns were nice, but they're also a little bit limited. And with the container builder and elements, without the columns, you have far more flexibility. The learning curve is a bit bigger than with sections and columns, but you can do more things. And in the end of the day, you'll know more about how to make great websites. And I'm here to teach you everything. So. There are a few ways on how to import a container because we're going to work with containers and in those containers, we're going to place elements. So the first way on how to create or import a container is clicking on the plus over here. Then we can choose a structure. We can choose a structure with one container with all the elements below each other or one container with all the elements next to each other, or we can have a left container and a right container. And there are a few more structures you can use. And if I choose one, there it is. And I also see it over here. I remove it. The second way on how to create a container or import a container is just dragging it over here and it will be there. The default one, one container without any containers in it. And the third one is dragging an element in this area and then automatically a container will be added. So if you want to save some time, and have a certain structure in mind, you can click on the plus and see if that structure is visible over here. So maybe we want to have an, a container with three parts. Then you can choose this one and then get rid of those three containers. And then you have three parts. So over here, I use the navigator to explain to you how everything works. And the navigator is also a great way to navigate through your website. I think personally, that's also the reason why it's called a navigator. So let me break it down a little bit more. I imported this pre-made area and I see over here I have a container. And if I click on the arrow, I see that there are three containers in that container. So you don't work with columns, but you work with containers and you can have nested containers. So I have three nested containers in one container. So if I click on the head container, then I can go to the layout and I can decide a few things. 
Right now, the content width is boxed. That means that it's here from the left to the right over here. If I would change that and I make it full width, look at this. This border is now totally at the left and here totally at the right. So if I make the screen smaller, it's totally from the left to the right. If I bring it back to boxed, it's here from the left to the right. If I do that box, I can also decide what the width should be. So I can make it smaller than the website is. So the website is from here until here, but I decide that this container should be smaller. And then those containers within, they adjust automatically. The width will adjust to the width of the container. If I remove this, I'll get rid of it. I can change the minimum height. Uh, by the way, if I would place something, an element, I can do that by clicking here. Then I go to all the elements. If I drag an element over here, the height of the container will automatically adjust. So I can go to the container, change the minimum height, or I can let the elements decide how high the content should be. But what I prefer is to set the height of a container. So uh, let's bring it to 600 pixels. And you can do that in pixels or you can then do it in viewport height. What does it mean viewport height? It depends on the screen of your visitor on your website. It will say, if you say viewport height and I say 50%, it will say that this will fill 50% of the screen of your visitor's computer. So if he has a big screen, it will be bigger than when he has a small screen. So if you want to have a pixel perfect height, no matter how big the screen is, you can do pixel perfect. You can say 600. So let me go back. If I want to go back, I go to this area. I drag a container over here. And if I want to get rid of this one, say right mouse click, delete. What I can do now, I can click on the plus, add an image, drag it over here. It's really big. Now I can, let's grab this one. Now I can duplicate it, duplicate it, duplicate it and duplicate it. If I go to the container, why is it below each other? Because here at the container, uh, there's no direction. If I say everything should be vertical, then everything will stay exactly the same. But if I say I want everything to be horizontal, it will go from left to the right. And it doesn't matter how many times I will duplicate it. It will fit in one row. So if I go back to the container, everything goes from the left to the right, but I can also put something in between. So I go for a header and I say text. So the text is wrapping a bit weird. So let me remove a few images. Like that. But what I can do if I go to the container, I can put everything next to each other, below each other. So then the text appears over here, but also the other way around. But I only use this in tablet view or in mobile view. I'll talk about it later. So let's put it from the left to the right. And let's remove all the images. Now I have this text. I can duplicate it, duplicate it and duplicate it. What I see by default is going from the left to the right. That's okay. Let me make this a little bit higher. Let's say 500 pixels, but it's only at the top. How do I get this here at the center or here below? Well, depending on the direction, look at this. If I say the column is vertical, it is below each other. When I say vertical, this changes and this changes. So look at this. If I go to the left, take a look at this area and this area, it changes. So if I put everything from the left to the right, that's okay. But now I can justify the content. I can say everything should be at the left, which is already the case. I can say everything should be at the center. Now everything is in the center, but still close to each other. So not here at the left, not there at the right. I can put everything to the end. Now look at this. I can have space between. Now there's space between. So here at the left, it starts here at the right. It ends and everything else is evenly divided. So if I would duplicate one of them, this space over here is still evenly divided. I go back to the container. I can also create some space around. 
that means that there's also a space here at the left and at the right. So with every element, there's this same amount of space here at the left as at the right. So here is twice as much space as over here. And I can also say space evenly. And that means between every element, both left and right is the same amount of space. So this area, this area, maybe you're thinking 30. What are you doing? What are you talking about? This is behind the, the header. It's so complicated. What are you doing? Okay. Through this tutorial, I will show you step by step how everything works. It has a learning curve, but I'm with you. And if you have any question, please leave a comment. I will do my best to create more tutorials to explain everything to you. This is amazing. Making websites like this is amazing. So right now we justified the content on one level, but we can do more. We can align the items by default. It's at the top, but I can also bring it to the center. And since we're working with a horizontal row, when I say center, the center is vertically. When I make it vertical, then horizontally, this is in the center. So depending on the direction, this changes. I can also place it at the end, we're here below, or I can stretch it. So let's say I bring it to the center. What I can do now in order to make it even more flexible, I can select one of the headings, go to advanced and override the alignment. So even though everything is in the center and at the center, I can say I want it to be at the start. I go to this one, advanced, bring it to the end. So now you see the, 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 the things we can do. And, and right now it's stupid text, a few columns here, like, what are you doing? But through the tutorial, I will sh show you the power of this tool. It is amazing what you can do with this. And if I remove something, everything adjusts automatically. So if I have three boxes with three features I want to show, and then I think, hey, but actually there's a, a fourth feature. I just can say duplicate it. And then I adjust the information and then automatically it will respond. Well, there's more to show, but right now I want to start with a container. So I drag it over here. And I want to start with the style, the background gradient with this color, the green color. The second color will be this dark one. I change the angle to 90 and then I'll show you what you can do. So I go to the layout and I change the height to 600. So now you see how beautiful it looks with this background in the menu over here. I like to keep things organized. So I double click on the container in the navigator and I call this one the hero. The hero is the first thing people will see when they enter my website. And then I start to think again, what do I want to show in my website? I want to have a, a clear text about what people can expect from me. And I want to show an example of what I can do for people. So I want to show a website example that I've made so people can see at once, hey, this guy delivers some quality and it's really clear what he has to offer for me. So what I will do, I will create two parts over here. So I drag this container over here and then I can duplicate that container. And what I see by default, those containers are below each other. Then again, if I go to the hero container, I can change the direction to left to right. Look at that. That's how you do it. Now I want to start with a heading over here. I drag it over here. That's how easy it is. And it's here at the top. I don't want that. So what I'll do, I go to the hero and I say the content should be aligned in the center. Oh. So right now I selected the container. When I select the container, I see three tabs over here, the layout, self-explanatory here. We can change the layout. Then we can change the style over here, change the colors, background, work with borders, shape dividers. And here we have the advanced area. We can play with the margin and the padding. We can create motion effects, transform things, make things responsive and add some custom CSS, which is by the way, a pro option, but thanks to the Bloxy theme, we can also add CSS in our theme and then we'll, it will still apply within Elementor. So depending on what you select, there are three tabs, almost always three tabs, layout, style, advanced. If I go to this heading, look at this. 
we see the tab content. So here we can change the content. We have the style. And depending on the element, there are different styling options. And then we have advanced, which are the same options as with the hero. See? So we're going to explore them more and more. And if I would add an image, for instance, over here to the, at the right, I see content, but there are different options over here and at the styling. Then when I would go to the heading. So, so far so good. I go to the content and I can change the text. So I can change the text over here or by double clicking or triple clicking over here. We make websites that generate, that generate customers. Okay, so far, so good. Update. What I want to do before I continue, I click over here. I go to the site settings. I go to the global fonts. And if you go to fonts.google.com, I decided to go with uh, Nunito Sans as a normal font, but I want to go um, with Open Sans as the, as the default font. So primary, I will say Open Sans everywhere. Copy, paste it. Secondary also Open Sans. Third one. So by default, the text on my website will be Open Sans. Let's update it. And then this is the fallback sans serif, which is great because I don't want to use a uh, serif. I go back, then I go to the typography and over here, the body text typography. I want this to be open sans and the default text font. I think 18 is great, big letters. And then all the headers, H1, H2, this is a header. I want them to be Nunito sans sans. So I copy this, select it over here. H2. Did you see that it changed? That means that this is an H2. By default, a header starts with H2. You can have only one H1 header on every page. That's really important for Google. And after that, I will use H2 headers or headings. Paste it. There it is. There you go. So two fonts and that's totally fine for me. I click here, go to the style, change the text color to a global color. That means that if I want to change that global color later on, it will be changed over here. The typography by default is Nunito Sans. So if I go for Nunito Sans, it should be exactly the same. And that's the case. So I don't need this. And bring it back. I can make it bigger. Okay. We make websites that genera generate customers. That's my goal. I want to show that to people. I know how to get customers from websites. And that's what I want to help people with. So then I want to have a call to action, actually two call to actions. And then I take a look at Apple, really smart. They have two options. I see this, they have a clear image. People get excited and they think, Hey, I want that. So, or people are convinced and they are like, okay, where do I buy this? Well, there's a really straightforward button on the website that says buy, or people are like, okay, that seems nice. What does it offer? I only see two cameras instead of five. Hmm. I want to learn more. So all the customers can be helped with those two buttons or people want to learn more or people want to buy or people close the website. Well, if I take a look at Tesla.com. Also two options, create a custom one that will take longer or see what's already available. So people that are like, okay, I want to create my custom one with a certain color, click here and Hey, I want to have a Tesla as soon as possible. And then they scroll down and again, two options. The images are great. Images are really important in your branding. So we can learn from those amazing websites, people that spend companies that spend millions of dollars in marketing. And we can just take a look at their website and learn from that for free. So I want to have two call to actions. So I go over here to all the elements and I drag it here below. I want to change this to R K 
cases or our work. Then I search for work in the link and then I can select the page our work. So it will link automatically to this page, our work. Great. Then I want to create a style, but there's another call to action I want to have. So I will duplicate it, but now it's below each other. I want to have this next to each other. How can I do that? Let me explain in a minute. First, I click over here. I want to change this to get in touch. And then I want to go to the style. And then I see the button typography. That's already okay with me. I want to go for the background color. And again, I want people to get in touch with me. So I change the color to this one to get some attention. And then I want to change the border radius to 25. And then I can say right mouse click copy and paste the style. But then I prefer if I click over here not to make this yellow because then there's too much yellow. The only color I want to use over here is to get people to the contact form or to reach out to us, to call us. So I want this to be another color, but I want to maintain the style. So I don't say I want to have a different color. Okay, why not? Let's go with green. No, 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 no. So what I prefer to do in this case, I click on the color and I make it transparent. And then I want to go for a border type solid and it will be white. So our work and get in touch or get a quote and, and uh, uh, later we'll talk about and what you can do is split testing and then see uh, get in touch uh, on page one and then the other page that other people will see other visitors is get a quote and then you can see what triggers better. What are people clicking more on get in touch? or reach out to us or get a quote and then you can see how you can convert more people. Really exciting stuff. But I want this to be next to each other. How can I do that? I go over here to all the elements and I drag a new container because right now over here in this container, by default, everything is below each other. So I can say, you know what? I'll put everything next to each other, but then it just looks weird. So in order to fix that, we create a new container. We import it over here. And in that container, I want to have this and this. And every container has their own rules. So over here, I can say, yes, I want everything to be from the left to the right. And that's how we build websites. Then I bring this more to the left. So our work, which goes to that page and get in touch, should go to the contact page. What should happen when we hover over here? Well, over here, I can go to the style and say when people hover over here, the background should become green and also over here, style, hover, and the background should be green. If I want to create more space or less space over here, I go to the container and then over here at the gap between elements, I can increase it or decrease it to zero. So you can adjust everything pixel perfect. Then we make websites that generate customers. I'm happy with that. I update it and then I can click on the eye. It's really nice about Elementor. It looks nice, but now when I want to change something, look at this. Since I use the eye and I decide that I want to say work too, and I click on update, I don't have to refresh this page. Automatically it will be refreshed. And this is so nice when you think about workflow and speed. It is just so intuitive. So that's what makes me really happy. And what I also see here at the left, everything seems to be in the same place. But when I go to my website, this is wider than this. Why is that? Because we use a theme and a page builder. The header is from the theme and this is from the page builder. And with both the theme and the page builder, we have the settings for the width. So if I go to Elementor, I go to the three lines to the site settings and layout, it is 1140 and I want to keep it that way. That's a great width for a website. Now, if I go to the customizer of the Bloxy theme, I can go to general layout and I see the width is different. So if I paste that, now we have the same width for both the page builder and the theme. 
So if I close this, everything is lined up perfectly. I have been making websites since 1999. I started in Front Page Express, then I went to Dreamweaver, then Joomla, then WordPress. And now I'm still with WordPress. But still, to this day, I'm sometimes confused about padding and margin. Instead of telling you right now in front of the camera, I will just show you how it works. Padding and margin. Coming next, right now. Well, over here, I see there's small space, so it's not perfectly lining up. And that has everything to do with padding and margin. So what is padding and what is margin? Let me show you. If I click over here and I go to advanced and I give this a background, let's say yellow one or orange. Right now you see that the text is really close to the border. What you also see is that there's a small gap between this container and this element. And that is everything to do here at the layout with margin and padding. What is margin? Margin is creating space outside of an element. So I have this yellow background and when I increase the margin, that yellow background does not go with us, but I create space outside of this element. With padding, it's the other way around. I create space within an element. So now I will see there will be more space between the text and the background. So let me do that. So if I would also say 22, margin creates space outside of the area, padding creates space within the area. If you don't use padding, your website will look ugly. So please always use padding. This looks, let's say that this looks better than this. I never want to see that in the website. Sometimes people come to me, hey, Ferdy, I made a website based on your tutorial. This is how it looks. And then I see that I'm like, oh, the padding and the colors. Ooh. And then I think maybe I should make better tutorials. And that's why I'm doing my best right now to talk about margin and padding. That's why you see that gap. If I make this zero and zero, look at this. Now there is still a gap. So if I click over here, and go to advanced and I uncheck the padding. Look at this. Now it is gone because the padding is inside of this container. So if I turn this on again and I remove it, then that space is back because by default there's always a little bit of padding. That's uh, how it works with padding and margin. So I go back to the element, scroll down, background. No, thank you. So over here, I want to make use of no padding. Bam. And now everything is aligning perfectly. And I think there can be more space over here. So then I go to container, layout. And in the beginning, maybe you're searching where everything is. And the more you play around with this, the more you work with Elementor, the clearer it becomes. I say 20. Update. That goes. We make websites that generate customers. And now I want to show my work. Double click or click once and go to content. Get rid of the two. And then I want to add an image that shows me how good I am in making websites. So I drag this image over here. I have this image on my computer and you can Google uh, on YouTube on how to learn things like this, how to make it. I go to the web define folder to homepage. And then I have here my website, which I've made and I made sure it's visible on all devices. So I want to show it. It's a PNG. So it has a transparent background. And what I always want to do, copy the title of the website, paste it in the alt text and paste it in the description. Insert the media. Now it looks like this. Let's update it. And now it looks like this. Okay. That's okay. We can make it look better, in my opinion. But this is a start. Okay, let's take it a step further. I have multiple of those images. So I can remove this one. I can search for a carousel. I drag it over here. And then I can have multiple images. So let me add another one. Upload files. Select files. And then I go for console delivery. Open. Now I can select this one, hold shift, select the other one, and I can create a new gallery. 
I can change the order and insert the gallery. Right now it looks like this. So first the image size, I want it to be large. Then I want to show only one slide at a time like that. And now I can slide. Nice. But I don't want people to do that. I want to, it to go automatically. So uh, the navigation, I don't say arrow and dots, arrows and dots. I want to say just dots, only those dots over here. I don't want those arrows. I don't want those dots. So over here at navigation, I say none. I don't want it to link. I don't want it to have a caption. So I go to the additional options. Now to turn on autoplay. When I hover over it, I still want it to uh, continue. So I say no pause on hover, no pause on interaction. And every three seconds, I want to show a new image, infinite loop. So after the latest image, the first one appears again. I want to change the effect from slide to fade. Look at this one, two, three, like that. I want the animation speed to be a second, which is a thousand milliseconds. And the direction doesn't matter because I'm fading it instead of sliding it. Update. There you go. So people know what we can do. People can learn more about our work, see our portfolio or our work or our case studies, or they can get in touch. And here they can see already a little bit of what we can do. So I want to create multiple images over here so people can see what I can do for them. Well, this is a lot of space, but I think it's good. I can also bring it down. So go to the hero layout, make it look like this, but it's, it's, it's too close. So, uh, I think 600 pixels is fine. And then what I want to do, I want to go to the style of the container, close this. I want to use a shape divider and at the bottom, I can choose a type so I can have mountains like this or clouds or tilt. And what I think only, I would only use two or three because I think if you use pyramids, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pyramids is okay, but zigzag also okay. And then you can change the width, the height, but uh, it should be beneficial for the website and not get people away from the goal of the website. It should not be too distracting. That's what I mean. So what I prefer is waves. I can play around with those, change the height. I can flip them. I can invert them. And actually I'm, uh, I'm okay with this. Looks great in my opinion. So let's leave it with that. And now if I take a look at the first part of our website, our hero, it looks nice. And when people scroll down, which is not possible right now, but you would see the menu in a different way. I like to keep structure in my website. So also here in the navigator, I want to have um, some clarity. So I say website title or just title. I know it's a website and here at the right our work Corazel. By the way, this navigator, I can also bring it here to the right, but then my website becomes a bit smaller. Um, you can get used to it, but I prefer to just keep it flowing. Then I can get rid of it or I can get it back. So we have created a hero in Elementor. Congratulations. I hope you like the tool. Maybe you're like, oh, it's so hard. It's so frustrating. I don't understand. You're going all over the place. Yes, I am. But the more you watch this, the more you play around with this, the easier it becomes. I, I love the Flexbox container. It's, it's easy uh, at the end. It's easier. It's faster. Your website will be faster. Uh, and now step by step, I want to dive a little bit deeper, show you different aspects of the Elementor Flexbox container. So um, let's dive a little bit deeper with the next part in this tutorial. So now I click on the plus over here. I want to go for six areas. Actually not. I want to go for three, but there are already three over here. So I remove those ones. I click on the plus, I search for an icon box. I drag it over here and then I want to change the content. So I want to change the title and I want to say, we listen, we think it's really important to listen to our clients. What is our goal for the website? So that's the title 
And then the second thing is a text. So I explain a little bit what I mean by we listen. I want to tell you that a text writing, uh, an artist, uh, so you can hire someone to write a text for you. But uh, I always started out with my own text for the websites I made and I'm doing fine. But if you want to take it to the next level, it's not wrong to let someone else take a look at your text and see if they can be improved. So I want to find an icon that suits this text. So I can search for an ear or listen. That's an ear. So I can insert it. Or maybe you're not into ears. You're afraid that your customers are neither. Then I can search for a bulb. Light bulb. Okay, this is how it looks. Uh, I don't like it. It looks like this. And, ugh, I don't like it. So how can we make this look better? Well, here you can change the view from default to stacked or framed. I want to go for frame. The shape, I can make it a square or a circle. I like the circle because everywhere there are circles and roundings. I can have a link. I don't have a link, so I don't use it. And I can change the position. That's really important. I want to bring this to the left like that. Then I go to the style. So we have the content. Now I want to style that content. So I start with the primary color, which is this one. And then the secondary color is my green color. Then I can play around with the spacing. I think 15 is great. I can change the size. So let's start with zero and go to 20. We can play around with the padding, increase it. I think 15 is fine. We can even turn it a little bit. Look at this. And I think 10 is okay. We rotate it a little bit. Then the border. I don't want to have a border. So I say zero. And now it looks like this. Already a little bit better. I close the icon panel and I go to the content panel. And it's already aligned at the left. I think that's great. The top alignment is also fine. I want to change the color of the title to this dark one. The typography font is okay, but I want to make the text a little bit smaller. 18. Not too big, it's okay. No text stroke or shadow. Then I go to the description and I want to change the color to the dark one, the typography. Let's say thirteen. I'll do add another word. We listen to your story and ask important questions to find out. So now there are three uh, lines. I like that better. So I update it. And what I want to do now, I want to go to the container to advanced, uncheck this margin and then here I want to go into the negative. So minus one, minus two, etc. I want to bring this up so it will be in front of this nice curve. So let's say a minus 70. So now I want to give this a background. So I go to the container over here that contains the icon box and then I go to the style background of the container and I want it to be white. Then I want to go to the border. And the border radius, I want it to be 20. If I update it and I take a look, okay, I want to increase the padding. Right now it's, it's uh, too close to the edge. So over here, I go to advanced and I increase the padding. 20. What I can do now, I can duplicate it. And then I remove this. Okay. I go to the first container, then I go to style, border, I want to go for a box shadow. I don't do anything with horizontal, vertical and spread. I only want to go for 20, maybe more, 30 shadow, let's say 25. Now I can copy the style and paste it over here, right mouse click, paste the style and paste the style. What I don't like, of course, is that those three areas are sticking together. There's no space in between. How do I fix that? I go to Elementor, to the container, to layout, 
And now I can increase the gap between the elements. But when I do that, look at that, this slides into the next row. Why? Because over here at the wrap, we said it needs to wrap. If I say no, it will stick on one line. So I can increase this and look at this. Automatically, everything stays the same. That's really nice. Even if I would add another one, look at this. It'll stay in one line. That's what happens when you have the wrap on no wrap. So when you have no wrap, <laughs> uh, let me see. Yeah, better. Okay. Now I want to change the content over here. So the icon. And first I want to say, we do not only listen, but we think along. I think we think along. I want to change the text. Then I change the icon. Maybe a handshake, like working together, thinking along. And then the third one, we are fast. So I want to go for a clock. This one. And I change the text. That's enough. So we listen, we think along and we are fast. Great. I want to reduce the space over here. So you should know by now that I should go to the container to layout and then over here the gap in between. I want to reduce it to 20. Yes, better. I want to bring it up a little bit more. So I go to advanced at the container. Say minus 85. Okay. Since I brought this up, look at this. Here is less space than here. How can I fix that? Well, I can go to the hero, go to advanced, and then at the padding, uncheck this, and at the bottom, I can increase it. And see, everything the, the height stays the same. The only thing that happens is that this is shifting up until I think it's in the center. better i'm happy with uh, the results we have a dark area we have a light area now i want to create a new dark area even though this is a small area i'm still going for the dark area so what i do i click on the plus and i want to have two areas i want to say something about my company like I want to let people taste a little bit of the atmosphere by saying something about the company and showing some images so two parts so i select this one and then i create some space over here here at advanced adding i say Let's say 60 at the top and 60 at the bottom. And then I want to start with the text. What I can do, I can just say copy over here. And then over here I can say paste. Well, it's white text, so I don't see it. So I click on it. I go to the style and I make the text palette color one. Then I want to go to the background. And what I can do, I can copy this area. So here I'll right mouse click. Copy and then here, paste the style. There you go. Now I also pasted a few things I don't want. So what I can do, I can click over here, make this nothing. Then I go to the layout, minimum height, change it to nothing. I go to the style, to the shape divider, to the button, nothing, nothing, and None. Then I go back over here, padding, and then I turn this off and I say 60 and 60. Below this area, I want to have a text. Uh, of course, I want to change this text uh, to something else. Taste the atmosphere at Web Divine. Then below, I want to have a text, so I go for the text editor. I drag it here below and I paste a text. Then I want to go to the style text color. I make it white, really nice. And what I want to do, okay, it is time for a CSS lesson. And it looks a little bit um, complicated and maybe it is, but I just want to go for it. 
So what I see over here, I want to go over here to this color, right mouse click, inspect. I mean this button and I want to get the color over here. So I scroll down over here at the right and I see this over here. Color variation, yellow. So I see that's the color link initial color. If I click over here, I will be pointed to this area and then I see this code. So this is a color and I grab this code. Let me grab the whole area. I copy it. Okay. What I want to do, I want to make a highlight over here and that highlight, I want it to be the yellow color. But when I change the colors in my website later, I want that color also to change. So instead of selecting it and pasting the color code, I wanted to have the color palette one color. Let me show you. I go to Elementor. I want to go to this text over here, the content. And I go to the text area. So I see all the, the codes. So class P1, etc. So I search for the area. Nothing has to be done, but everything is possible. I can grab random text over here. So let me show you. Okay, there it is. Okay, I zoom in again. What I start with is this opening span space class to SS equals semicolon and then those two shift comma shift comma twice. And over here I can get this a class. So I can say palette zero one. Then I close this with an arrow to the right. Okay, everything after this will have a certain style until I close it. So nothing has to be done, but everything is possible. After that, I close it. Arrow left, forward slash span. Okay. You see nothing yet because we have not attached any style over here. So what I need to do, I need to create a class in the CSS dot palette zero one. And then I need to style that using CSS. It's also new for me. I just Google this, but I want to give you the best. So I go to the website, to the customizer. I scroll down over here also and now at additional CSS. Enter, enter. I say dot palette zero one opening. Let's see I say, if I say font dash W font weight, I can say bold what you see now look at this now this is bold so i can attach a lot of styles over here so let's start with color and then i paste this code and then again let me uh, get back that color right mouse click inspect click on the variation what i need is only this part Copy that var and then the palette color one. So let me use it over here and look at this. Wow. Okay. Now I think, okay, so much hassle for just this. Why? Well, let me show you now. If I close this and I go to the customizer. Look at this. If I go to the colors and I go to the main color, color one, and I copy this and I change this color. It will be changed everywhere in the website, but also here. So if I would just choose a color, a color code, and I change this, then I need to go back to all the places where I use this trick and then change it again. And I don't want that. So right now this color is linking to color palette one. And that's what I like. So let me paste it back by the way, six, five, seven, three. Look at this. I can change the whole style of the website in two clicks or in a few clicks. Look at that. Wow. What did I say? Zero, zero, six, five, three, six, something like that. No, no, I don't think so. I don't, I'm not sure. I paste the color back. Okay. Let me figure out what this color is. Branding web divine six, five, seven, three, almost seven, three. Okay. Now everything's back to normal. So now we have this special text. So if you want to emphasize something in your text, you can use this trick. It's for free, this extra trick. So I'm happy with the text. I'm not happy with the space over here. 
So what I want to do, I want to go to Elementor. I want to go to the container or the navigator. This is the second container. I can call this double click three features. Taste at atmosphere. And here at three features advanced at the bottom, I can increase this so I can create some space or even better. Maybe do that in the padding. Make it 60. Also here, it is already fine. Great. What I can do now, I, again, I can use a carousel, image carousel. I drag it over here. I select the images and what I did, um, the, unless you have your own images of your own company, you can go to ferdicorp.com forward slash iStock. And then you can get the photos. I have a, a subscription over here. So what I did, I set team. Then I found an image I liked this one. And I searched for photos of the same series. I bought a few photos. They can be expensive. They can be $27 per piece, but think about the, the, the first impression you leave behind. This also costs money, this mock-up, but I'm ready, re willing to invest because that's what people will see in my website that it looks professional. So it's up to you if you want to do that. If you want to go for the free alternative, go to pixabay.com. Then if you search for a team, you also can find nice images, but the quality is a little bit less or yeah, it's up to you to, to decide what you think about that. Okay. So I click on the plus, I go to upload files, select files. I go to web design business. And what I did really important. I renamed all the images I downloaded from iStock to Los Angeles web design, web design agency, California, because I want to be found on those terms. So also through images, you can be found. So I always rename them with keywords, command a, open them all. And now I can create a new gallery. I can change the order. I insert it into the gallery. Look at this by default. It looks like this The image size. Um, let's say 1024. How many slides to show one at a time image stretch. No navigation. Only dots. And I have no link, no caption and additional options. I want it to be auto played. No pause on hover, no pause on interaction. Every three seconds, a new image will appear and I will take the time of one second before the new slide appears. So the animation is one second like that. Infinite loop. Yes. After the latest image, the first one appears again. The effect, I like it to be slide and direction to the left like that. Then I want to go to the style, the position of the pagination. This one, I want it to be inside. I think that looks so much better. I want to increase the size, make it bigger, change the color, the normal color to white like that. And then the active color to orange. So again, it has style of our website. And then you can also play around with the, the width. So over here, I can say it should be 40%. Over here, I can say it should be 60%. And then you see it all aligns a little bit better. If I would update it and I click on the eye, let me close this. This is what we have so far. And I like it. So we are really clear with our goal. We make websites that generate customers. We talk a little bit about what we do. We listen, we think along, we are fast, more text about our company, what we can do for you. It's not only making a website where we're also thinking about other stuff, SEO, hosting, house style. <laughs> Styling, and I have to say, I, I just translated this text from Dutch. Don't take it too serious. Uh, normally you can also use lorem Ipsum text, but um, it's up to you what kind of text you want to place on your website. But don't take this too serious. This, this text that is probably full of errors. And then we have those images and people can navigate if they want to. 
So, so far, so good. Hello. Are you still having fun? I hope so. If you can appreciate what I'm doing in this tutorial, then please like this video. That would help me out a lot. And feel free to subscribe for more upcoming WordPress related tutorials. I help people to make websites that make them money. It can be through becoming a web design agency. It can be through affiliate marketing, through blogging, through advertising on your website, creating a social media website, creating a course website. All those tutorials I have on my YouTube channel and I'm creating new ones, better ones. So if you want to subscribe, please do that. And if you want to get updates, then click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button. You will be the first that sees when I create a new video. Now let's continue with Elementor and I want to show you more amazing stuff. Let's take a look at the next area. I want to create an area showing off what we have accomplished so far when it comes to nominations or awards. So I click on the plus or even better, let's start from scratch. I just drag a container over here and I want to start with a heading. So I duplicate this one, I drag it over here and I want to bring it to the center. And then I want to add four images. So the first one, upload files, select files. I go to wins, four logos. I open them and I get the first one. I duplicate it, then I get the second one, I duplicate it and then I get the third one and duplicate and the fourth one. So everything is below each other. It looks perfect. Let's go to the next area. No, I'm kidding. It doesn't look nice. No. So what I want, I want this to be on top and then below the four logos next to each other. How can I do that? Well, I can go to the container and change the arrow to the right. Great. So now everything is uh, next to each other, but that's not what I want. I want this to be on top. So what I can do, look at this. I can go to the container and I want to use the wrapper. So when something is not fitting, it goes to the next line. So if I go to this image or maybe even better, this image, I go to the style to pixels and I make it bigger. You see, this goes to the next line. So what I can do over here, I can go to advanced, change the width from default to 100%. So it pushes the next item, next element to the next line. If I make this one smaller, I bring it back and that one. So now we're getting somewhere. So what I do, I go to all the elements, individual elements. I go to the style pixels. I think what is the right amount of pixels in width. I think this one can be smaller. This one is okay. And this one can also be smaller in pixels. But what I want, I want everything to align in the center vertically. How can I do that? I go to the settings over here and now we can play around. So right now this from the left and nothing here at the right. So I can place it in the center. I can place it at the right. I can place space between space around space evenly. What I like to do, I like to bring it to the center, but then vertically also. So align items also to the center. And now it looks like this. Then I can go back, make it a bit smaller, just like this one. And it stays in the center. That's what I really like. Then I can go to the container, change the gap between the elements. Like that, I can go to advanced, uncheck the padding and say padding top 60 and bottom also 60 to create some space. And then of course I can change the title awards we have won. And that's how you create an area like this using the wrapper. Update. Great. I go to the backend and I want to create a new container. 
I click on the plus arrow down. I go to the style and I want to change this to a gradient with green and the color four. I change it to 90 and then I copy this area and I paste it and I paste it. I click over here, go to advanced, uncheck the padding and at the top I say 60. Then I go to the layout. I want to bring it to the center and to the center like that. Then I want to say over here what we what we are really good at. I want to make the text white. I want to make the text smaller. And then I go to advanced and also in a heading, I can give it a background. So I go to background at advanced and I change it to the yellow color. Now I go to the layout and at the padding, I increase it. Then I say, this is what we do. And then I want to create a new area with four columns over here. Copy this one and paste the style over here. Click over here. I change it from the left to the right like that. And now I want to have uh, some things in the container, a few. First, an icon. I drag it over here. After that, I go back. I want to have a title. So let me duplicate this one. Bring it over here. I want to duplicate it again. Then I want to have a list. I can list. And I drag it below. So we're going to make something beautiful out of this. The first thing I want to do, I want to go for an icon. And I want to talk about branding. So what fits branding? How about fingerprint? I would not do this one, but this one. Insert, go to the color and I want to make it white. Align it at the left. And then over here, really simple, I say zero one. I go to the style and I make it 20. Then I go to this text below and I say the first thing we do is branding. I want to change the color to white and the typography and that's okay, but I want to bring it closer. So I go to margin and I bring it closer over here. Then there's the list. I get rid of everything except the first one. I don't want to have an icon. I just want to say something okay, over here. What we do, we start with a brand scan. Like, hey, where is the company right now when it comes to branding? We scan that and based on that. Let me duplicate it. We will have a branding strategy. And then we will create a logo and branding. I don't like the colors, so I go to style, text, text color will be white. The text can be a bit smaller. A bit bolder. And then add a list. I want to increase the space between. No, it's fine. Okay. Okay. Update. So far. So good. Branding can be a bit smaller. Thirty five. Great. Now I want to duplicate this a few times and get rid of this one, this one and this one. Now I'll change the icons the number, the title, and the list. I'll be back with you. Okay, then I go over here. 
to advanced in the container and also at the bottom I want to create some space. And now look at this. I click over here, I can go to the layout. I can change the width, I can bring it closer to each other. And now I can say I can make it wider or leave it as this. And I can change the gap in between. Then I want to create a light area again. Again with four areas. I start with the first one. It will be a counter. I drag it over here. I would say that I already made more than 430 websites and I can have a plus. So I can have a suffix or a prefix. Prefix is before. So let's do before. And then 430, let's say four seconds, 4.3 seconds in order to show everything. I go to the styling, the text color, like that, and then the title to this color. And then I change the text to websites made. I duplicate it a few times. And I change this to years of experience. You know what? Over here. Wait, wait, wait. There's a glitch over here. I need to type over here, but I already typed it over here and now it's gone. So I can type it double. I go to the style, typography. This is the, the number. It can be 80. And then I go to the title, typography. Bit smaller. 16. And then make it bold. 700 bold or 600. Okay. Right mouse click copy. Paste the style. Paste the style. And paste the style. Over here. It can be faster. One second. What else? 12. Employees. And 19 awards. Great. Over here, you know what I want to do. Top 60, bottom 60. And then I want to end this page. I want to show more about my portfolio and stuff, but I will talk about it later in the tutorial. I want to create one more area, which is a call to action. So I create a new area with the arrow down. I want to start with the title, copy, paste, and with the background, copy, paste style, and then I say, reach out to us. And then I like to have a divider. So I drag it here and then we'll go to the right. So here I say arrow down, click here, change the amount of pixels and then first change the color so I can see what I'm doing. Increase the weight. And then let's, let's bring the pixels back because right now we see nothing. Bring it to the center. Yes. Then I want to have a text. So I copy this text, paste it over here. Then I bring it to the center here at alignment center. And again, the text can be made better, but there are other people for that. And then I want to have a call to action. It looks like this one, copy, paste, and then I say, get in touch. Yes. Okay. What I want to do over here, I want to go to the layout, 
content width is boxed, but I want to make it smaller. Like that. I love it. So this is what we have made. Updated. I think it looks great. Right now our website looks a little bit static. There's no movement. We can create movement. We can create animations. And let me show you how. What I want to do, I want to show two things. First, I want to show how you can add some animations. And second, I want to optimize this page for all devices. In order to create some animations in the website, we need to go to Elementor. And I can go to this button, for instance. I can go to Advanced. Close this panel, go to Motion Effects. And then I can give it an entrance animation from a lot of places. I can zoom it, bounce it. I personally only use zoom and I can fade it in from the left like that. I can change the duration to slow, normal or fast. And I can have a delay. So I can say that after a half second, it should appear. So if I update it and I take a look, look at this. After a half second, it appears. But I can say then that after 0.75 seconds, sorry, 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 wait, 500, get in touch, advanced motion effects. From the right, fast, I can say after 0.75 seconds. And then you get a nice animation. I can also grab a complete container instead of only an element. So I click here. Advanced motion effect from the right, normal, and then after 1.5 seconds. So then it will look like this. Well, I prefer to work with Antonio Banderas, but I, it will probably never happen. So I like to work with um, a normal animation. Let's say 500 seconds, I mean 500 milliseconds, then after a second. Okay, and now after one and a half second, disappears. So then I want to do this. Motion effects fading up after two seconds. Then this one fade up. Wait, 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 wait. Fade up, fade in up after 2.3 seconds. And then the third one after 2.6 seconds. Now this happens. Okay, well, I think there should be less. Okay, wait. We're coming closer to something that it needs to feel good. And then this one. So now first those three things. Okay, nice. And then, okay, this looks nice. Uh, when you do this, we, we, right now we, we make use of a delay, but if I would bring this to the right, we don't have to have a delay. I mean, sorry, on the left. Because it will animate as soon as we scroll down. So I do nothing, I scroll down, and then it appears. What I not suggest to do is to put animations everywhere in the website. I just keep it like this. But for the hero, I think it's okay to, to do that. So we refresh it. I think that's perfectly fine. The more you do this, the slower your website becomes. Keep that in mind. So we've created a page using Elementor. I hope you like it already and you get a little bit familiar with the tool. Now let's optimize this for all devices. And when I saw this, my life changed again. First, it was when I uh, met my wife. Of course, my life changed. Then I became a father before I started working with Elementor. Okay, long story short, um, we're going to show you 
how to make this website. And with we, I mean, I will show you how to uh, optimize this website for all devices. And it's going to blow your mind. I hope so. Maybe not because you already know how amazing Elementor is. So your expectations, <laughs> expectations are really high. Ferdy, you're talking too much. Yes, let's continue. But first, like this video. I'm watching. Come on, Ferdy, be serious. Come on, you need to be serious. YouTube is all about being serious. Okay, let's talk about optimizing your website for all devices. Now, I want to optimize my website for all devices. In order to do that, I go to the homepage and I click over here on the responsive mode and I click on the tablet. This looks okay, except for one thing. Let me go to the hero. Uh, because I use a lot of padding in the plus and the minus, everything else is zero. So the, the content is really close to the edge. I don't like that. Now we can uh, keep it here. So at the padding, I would like to say, I don't want to look up. I want to say 60. You know what? 30. Better. Okay. If I want to, I can click here, go to the style, to the typography. And what I will see, I see the size. And as soon as I see this tablet, that means I can give this a different size than when I'm on a desktop. So here it is this side, but if I, a size, but if I go to a, a desktop, it is 40. So that's the power of Elementor and optimizing your website. If I take a look at this area, really don't like it. So let me see how we can make this better. I think uh, there should be a padding everywhere. By the way, let's go to the hero and decrease the size because we don't need that amount of space. Let's say 500, more than enough. Okay, then let me see. I can also click over here, go to layout, change this. Make it, but it's, it's okay. And as long as I change nothing, it will automatically use the settings of the desktop. So if I would change something tablet mode, for instance, this text automatically, the same size of 33 will be visible on a phone unless I change it. So it overrides, it overrides each other. So what I want to do here, click over here. Fifteen, and I can copy it, paste it, and paste it, or Command Z, Command Z, and Command Z. And I click over here, and I go to the content, and I say icon position on top. Perfect. Copy, paste the style, and then of course I want to have my content title back to, let me see, sorry, the title back to 22. Copy, paste the style and paste the style. So look at that. When I go back to the desktop, it is at the left. When I go to the tablet, it's on top. How great is this? It's so easy to do. What else? Over here, I can take a look. I can say that um, when it comes to the alignment, this should be on top. You see, it's only at the tablet like that. So that is better in my opinion. Okay. Again, over here, advanced, make this 30. So there's a little bit more space everywhere. Awards, we have one again, also over here, advanced, adding 30. And then over here, I go to the style, pixels, make it 90. Over here, make it 200. Over here, make it 160. And then here, make it 120. Great. Over here, advanced. 30 everywhere. And then here, uh, let's go to the longest word style. Change the typography to 20. 22. Copy. Base style. Base style. And paste the style. 
Over here, typography. Make it 60. Copy. Base style. Base style. And base style. And this looks fine. So let's go to the mobile version. And then I go to the container. And I want to, sorry, the hero container. Let's increase it a bit. Then I go to the second container, advanced, and check. And bring it closer to each other. Like that. Maybe go to the layout. Decrease the height. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> this is not, sorry, of the hero, I mean. And then here, typography, sorry, content. And for the mobile, bring it to the center. And then over here, I can bring it up a little bit. Wait a minute. And check this, minus 60. A little bit. We listen. We think along. So over here, I go to the layout and I want to increase the gap in between. How about 60? So it gives some space. Also below at advanced. Uncheck. I say 30, 30, 60, 30. So below, I also have some space. This looks great. Awards, we have one. Make this one a bit bigger. So everything will be below each other. This is what we're really good at. I click over here, style, type park, sorry, uh, again, content, bring it to the center. And also this area, bring everything to the center and the center. And I copy this. I paste the style, paste the style, and I paste the style. This looks fine. Let's go to advanced, make everything 30. Bring it to the center and change the typography to 32. So that's why how we have optimized our website for all devices. This is our desktop screen. This is on a tablet. And this is on a phone. There are a few things I see that are not correct yet over here and over here. So let me fix that. Then I go to this area. I bring everything to the center. There you go. So now it is in the center better. Here below. Let's make everything a bit bigger or what we can say really simple for the mobile just direction down so everything will be below each other so now if i make that area smaller it's below each other and that's the way to cookie crumbles now i want to create the second page and what i will do through this tutorial i will start to talk a little bit more about copying and pasting because we can save quite some time by copying and pasting things uh, I want to talk about the about page, so let's get right to it. Now I want to go to the about page and I want to open it in a new tab holding command or control on the PC. I click over here. Here at the home page, I want to edit this with Elementor and meanwhile, I go to the about page and I want to edit the page. I cannot edit it with Elementor yet because I've not turned it on. So I click on edit page. And now over here, I can say edit with Elementor. And now it's an Elementor page. The first thing I do every time I go to a new page, I go to the settings and change the page layout to 
Elementor full width. I update it. And now if I would go back, exit, go to the website, to the about page, I can edit it with Elementor. So I open it. So I have both the homepage and the about page open in Elementor. Why? Because I want to copy and paste something. So I go to the homepage and here at the hero, right mouse click, copy. But here I only want to paste a style. So I go for my first container, arrow down, and then over here, right mouse click, I paste the style. Voila. Really nice, except for one thing. First, let me call this the title. I think it's way too high. So I can bring it back to 300. Or even better, I have a great idea, 250. Yes. Then I go to all the elements and I drag the heading over here. And I rename this to about. Then I go to the title and I want to bring it to the center. And I go to the heading. I go to the style and I change it to white. So that saves me some time. Now I want to create a second area and I want to dive a little bit deeper, show you some things you can do with Elementor and using Elementor and the Flexbank container. There are multiple ways on doing things and I prefer this way. If you have a better way, let me know. But what I want to do, I want to have an area over here with a, a nice background image. And then over here, I want to have a text with a white background that overlaps the image. Let me show you how I would do that. I click on the plus. I want to go for this area. The structure with two containers in one container. Then I go to the left container. I go to style, click on the classic area and go for an image. And I choose this image. I insert the media. Then I go to size, contain. And then I don't want to repeat it. No repeat. So now it looks like this. I go to the layout and I change the minimum height. Before I continue, I want to change the width to 60%. So now I see I have a little bit more place for the image. Perfect. Then I want to go to the style, to the border. I want to increase the border radius to 20. So we have a nice border over here. So far, so good. If I update it, it looks like this. I'm happy with that, except for this harsh corner. I want to have a rounded corner. So what do I need to do over here? I said the width is 60%, but over here, the width is 50. So I have a total of 110%. So I need to reduce this to 40. And now I can increase this over here. So I go to the height and increase it until it fits perfectly. I update it. Okay. Not working yet. Okay. I go to the style, change it to cover. Now it looks like this. Okay. I'm happy with it, but I think we can go a little bit higher. So probably because of the width over here, let me change this. We can get a better representation. I think it has to do with the navigator because I want to see the, the width of the website this is what I want. And I want to make it a little bit higher. Like that. Update. Nice. Now I want to create another area here below. Again, the structure, two containers. This time, this left container is 40% and the right container is 60%. The right container needs to have a background. So I go to the style and that color, I want it to be white. And again, I go to the border here and I want to create a radius of 20. Now I want to let this area overlap this image so you get a nice effect. How would I do that? I click on the container settings. I go to advanced, uncheck the margin and say minus 500 or less. So I scroll down. Like that. 
I still have the container selected and just to make sure I want the Z index to index to be 10 because right now we have two containers in front of each other and I want this one to be the front one. So I say this is 10 that is more than zero. So this is in front of this one. Now, what I want to do, I want to add a padding of 20 pixels Then I click over here. I want to add a heading and I say about web divine. I go back to the right container, advanced. I go to padding and I increase it to 20. Then I want to go for a text. And if I want to use dummy text like this, I go to dummy text generator. And then I can have a lot of settings. So I can say 200 words in six paragraphs. And I can say I will grab three paragraphs. Like that. Look how beautiful that looks. So I update it and I take a look. And this is the effect I had in mind. You know what? I can also say I want to have uh, less text. And then go to the container. Let me see. I mean the upper container. And then bring this a little bit more to the center. Update. Great. Then I want to go to the other container and at advanced, I uncheck this and I say at the top, I want to have 60 pixels and at the bottom, I also want to have 60 pixels. And now I need to go to the other container and bring it a little bit more to the center. Update. Yes. Okay. I want to change the background over here. So what I will do, I will go to the container. Uh, let me see the, 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 this container to the style background the color. I want it to be the bluish color, this one. But now I want this also to be the same color. Otherwise it looks a little bit weird. So I go to the title to the style shape divider bottom, change the color also to the blue one. Perfect. Yes. I like it a lot. And then here I can do, do the same I did before. Highlight some text, make them bold. Uh, give them that yellow color. If I want to know how to do that, I go over here to the home page, edit with Elementor. Scroll down, click here, go to the text and then over here, span palette. I copy it, leave, close this and then over here, go to the text. Okay. Let's get rid of this uh, bold stuff. Then I go to the text and I can just paste it here. And then at the end, end of span like that. That's the first word. Then also here and the end of the span. And then one more in the center. I mean, span. Great. Make sure those paragraphs come back. Update. Yes, that's what I want. I want to create another area here below. So I click on it. Arrow right. And then I go to advanced with margin and make sure I correct all the negative margins I created over here. So I will bring those lines closer. 
Then I go for the style background. Let's see, let's do the, uh, the gradient again. And then 90. Now I want to create something, but it's only available in the pro version of Elementor. I'm not going to upsell you saying, hey, now you need Elementor Pro. There are alternative third party plugins that are built on top of Elementor. Elementor is really popular. So other companies come and they build things upon on top of Elementor. So there, if we go to the plugins, we can uh, install an extra plugin and that gives us a lot of free extra elements within Elementor. So let me show you how to get it. And then I want to show you how you can add a team member element in your website for free. And I want to add uh, some team members, but uh, there's no Elementor free element that's doing that. So what I want to do, I want to show you what else is possible. So I click on the eye then I go to the back end to plugins, add new and look at this. If I search for Elementor, there are a lot of third party plugins that will build upon Elementor. For instance, essential add-ons and those plugins are quite popular. More than a million installations. A lot of people like it, even more than Elementor itself. Updated four days ago and compatible with my version of WordPress. So I click on install now. I activate it and look at this. If I would go to essential add-ons, I close this, I close this and I go to elements. I can choose all the elements I want to use. So I know for sure I don't want to do anything with WooCommerce. So I turn it off. Why would you want to turn it off? Well, the more Elementor needs to load, the slower your website becomes when you're editing your website. So what I like over here somewhere is team member. It's also popular. So now if I go to my website about edit with Elementor, I can scroll down. I go over here to all the elements and I search for team. There it is. Essential add-ons team member. I drag it over here and it's really big. That's no problem. So I will choose an image and I go upload files. I got those images from iStock. So let's say team. I upload them all. And I grab the first image. I insert it. There you go. I change the image size to 1024 and then I can change the content. So this is Andy. He is the CEO and I can have a text. So again, I go to dummy text generator. And I want to have this text and then I'll see it here below. And I want to have two paragraphs. Let's copy it. Then I go to social profiles. I don't want to show them. And there's a lot of room for improvement. So what I can say over here, click over here, go to advanced. I change the width from default to custom. And I say, let's make this 300 pixels. But it's still percentage. 300 pixels. So you see a little bit better what you can do. Then I go to the background and I make it white. Great. And I actually like this. I want to go to the styling. I can change the style, overlay style, but I prefer to show everything at once. Then I want to go to the colors and typography and the member name I want it to be yellow orange color. The job position, I want it to be the green color and a little bit bigger. Let's say bolder at least. Bold. And then maybe 18, just like the title. And then the text, maybe a bit smaller. And change the line height. Give it some space. That looks nice. What I want to do, I want to have some more space over here. How can I do that? Well, by now you should know you go to advanced padding and you increase it, but then also the image decreases. I don't want that. 
So what I can do, I can leave it like this. I check it. Right mouse click, inspect. And over here, I see this area. So let's try it. I say margin 20 pixels. So now I see that this is changing. So if I increase it, but it's not for the whole area. So let me get rid of it. Refresh. And what I would do, right mouse click, inspect. But now I hover over here to see when the whole area is selected. This one. So now I know this class, let me copy it, is adjustable. And when I adjust this, this area will be adjusted. So I always test it. Let me go to the customizer, show you what I mean. I copied it, the class. I go to additional CSS. I start with a point. Every class starts with a point. I open it, opening parentheses, and then I can say background. black and then I see okay this is working I'm having the right area over here so then I change it to margin 20 pixels now there's more space over here and that is what I like close it refresh Elementor I scroll down and I go over here to advanced and at the top I want to have at least 60 pixels and at the bottom also 60 pixels. Now I want to duplicate it. You see it's fitting automatically. Why? Because over here and layout, I said nothing about wrapping. If I do that, then it goes to a new line. But there's more space over here, so we can do a few things. First, I can decide that everything should be in the center, then it's okay. But now there's a lot of space over here left. I want to use those lines. So what I can do, I can increase the gap until it doesn't fit anymore. But there's a lot of space in between. So what I prefer to do, I click over here, go to advanced, and I change it to, let's say, 370, copy, paste style, paste style. Okay, then I go to the container and I increase, decrease it. So let me see how much space I've left. Okay, 15 pixels. So what I can say over here, a little bit of math, let's say 65. Or let's say 60, 360, copy or copy, paste style and paste style. Okay, now I go back to the container, increase it until I see it goes to a new line. Okay, 30. And now it looks great. Copy the style, paste it over here and paste it over here. Now I can change the content, so I'll be back with you in a minute. So now it looks like this. And if I want to, I can go to the container settings and bring it to the left like that. Everything aligns perfectly. And if I would duplicate it, it just continues. So that's a really nice flow. Really easy to do using the Flexbox container. And now we've created quite a nice page using Elementor. And now I want to know how it looks when we optimize it for all devices. So let's see on an iPad or a tablet. Okay, this is too high. So I go back to the navigator title. Better. This still uh, looks great if you ask me. Okay, here I want to have a little bit more spacing. Let's say 60. And then I go over here and I make this 300, I think 340 is fine. Copy, paste style, no it's not. Okay, let's see. Okay, 
copy paste style. Let's see what's happening here. How small should it become before? Okay. Now I know. 3-5. Base style. Base style. And base style. Okay. So far so good. And then for a phone. About. Let's make it 250. Also nice this. Perfect. Okay, over here. I think advanced 30 is also fine. Perfect. I'm happy with the result. You see, optimizing the website is not a big task because by default, Elementor is doing a great job. So that's how we create our second page. I've shown you already a little bit that you can copy and paste things in Elementor. Now I want to take that to the next level. Next, the next few pages will be created by copying and pasting and adjusting. And it will save you a lot of time. And oh man, I'm excited about this. I hope you will be too. So let's get uh, right to it. Okay, we're going to create a new page, but this time I'm going to make use of copying, pasting and saving and importing templates. So the first thing I want to do, I want to open this in a new tab. The, the, the services page, then I open this page in Elementor and the service page. I click on edit page, edit with Elementor. And now you should know the drill, go to the settings, change the page layout to full width. And then also the title will be gone. So what I can do, I can go to the title, copy, and paste it. That saves time. What I also can do. I can go to the title, right mouse click, save as a template. I call this one title, save it. And now in my templates, it is stored. So I go to this page, I click on the folder icon. I go to my templates and I import it. I don't apply the settings, just a style. So that saves time. And for the next page, I can do the same. So I change this to services. I want to have some extra information here below. In order to get it, I click on the I over here. I go to the home page. I click on edit with Elementor because I want to grab something from the home page. I scroll down and I have this text over here. So I say right mouse click, copy, right mouse click. I paste it and then below it will appear or to the right. So I can go to the title settings, change the arrow to arrow down. Then I want to say something. So I go for the text editor, I drag it down and I go to dummy text generator and I grab this text and I paste it. Let's keep it with this. Okay. I go to the style, change the color to white and then I go to the title and I change the width of the whole container content. something like this 500. So I need to create more space because it's not fitting. So I change this a bit. Let's say uh, 400 or 500. Go to advanced. Get rid of that. Great. Then I click on the text. I want to bring it to the center. And you know what? Let's say 450 or 400. Yes. Great. Again, I go to the home page and I want to copy this area. Look at this right now. We have a dark background. I can change it. I can copy it. Paste it. Then I go to the background and I change it from the gradient to a classic color, which is the light greenish bluish color. So it looks like that. Then I go to all the containers. I go to the style and I change the style to this color. Okay. Before I continue, let me remove this. Click over here. I go to the border. I want it to be 20. 
So we have nice rounded corners. I go to advanced, the padding, and I increase it. And now right mouse click, copy, paste, get rid of this, paste style, get rid of this, and paste style, and get rid of this. Okay, I have to say I'm, I'm going a bit fast um, because I'm excited. I need to be careful with that. But look how easy it is to adjust all those things by copying and pasting and then adjusting. I go to advanced and I change this to 30 to 30. Okay, and now I want to create a new area. And I want to talk about all those beautiful features I have, all those services I offer. So I click on the plus, I want to have two columns. One will be 45% and the other one will be 55%. So I copy this, copy, paste, I copy the branding text, copy, paste and I change the color to a dark one. Then I want to go for a text. So I drag it here below and I paste the text. Then I want to copy this area, copy, paste, and I change the colors to green and I want to make the text bolder. Then I go to the home page. I grab this button, copy, right mouse click, paste, and I want to get rid of the animation. So I go to advanced motion effects X. There it is. And then I click over here, go to the content and I say, go to the branding page. Wait, branding. So I can search for branding or type it in and then the branding page will appear. Okay. I go to the container to advanced, uncheck this and make this 60 and 60. I go to the style and I change the background to the light greenish bluish color. And then I want to go for the border and at the top, I want to have a solid color, which is orange. Uncheck this only at the top. Three pixels. Great. I click over here. I want to go to the style background type image and I want to grab an image and insert the media and then click on size cover. And then I go to the border and I change it to 20. So there's a lot of, of uh, there's not much space over here. So what I can do, I can go to the container and since we have not wrapped it, look at this, I can make this, a big, this as big as possible. Everything stays on the same line or same row. So uh, let's say 30 or 40 better. Now I can duplicate this area and look at this. I click on the container and instead of arrow right, I say arrow left. That's how easy you can change it. So let me duplicate it again. I click here. Okay. Duplicate it again. Now over here, I say that. So left, right, left, right. And now I need to adjust the content. So I go to this area, branding, and then web design. Make it a two, three, development, optimization, four, great, branding, web design, web design. Let me be back with you when I've adjusted everything. Okay. I copy this from web design. I paste it. Then I copy this style. I paste this style. I remove this. So that's how you can work really efficiently. 
And the more you do this, the, the easier it becomes, of course. I really like flying through my pages, adjusting things. The latest one, copy, paste, copy the style, paste the style, remove it. And of course, we need to change the text, but it's lorem ipsum text. Okay, then I want to end with the following at the home page. I have a call to action, copy, paste, and that's the way the cookie crumbles. Because look at this, this is what we have created within 15 minutes, maybe within 10 minutes, I don't know. Branding, web design. Oh, of course we need to, uh, I need to change those images. Look at this, how easy. Click, click, click. And it would be great if those images are representation of the subject over here. So at development, I could show something with a graph. Don't make it too uh, corny. Be creative, but right now I just grab the images I have over here. So a really nice page, if you ask me, and we create it in a relative short amount of time because we could, could copy and paste a lot of things. How does it look on a mobile? Really important question. I'm glad you asked. Let me click over here, go for the tablet. Then I go to the navigator title. Let's increase it 350 or 400. I click over here, go to the style. I copy this, I paste it over here, the style, paste the style and paste the style. And what I don't like is that this is longer than this. So what I am, I need to fix this somehow. So let me see, I can go to padding. Okay, that's how it has been solved right now. Over here, of course, we need to talk about padding 30. Okay, for this image, I click over here, go to the style, and I change the size to contain, and no repeat. Copy the style over here. I say 30, paste the style, paste the style, and over here make it. 30, paste the style, make it 30, and that looks fine. Okay, on the mobile, wow, how about we, we increase the height a bit? Okay, so far so good. And bring this maybe to the center. Or copy. Paste the style and paste the style. If I take a look over here. Make it cover again and maybe a bit higher. 180. Copy, paste style, paste style, and paste style. And that's it. Let me see how it looks on the normal screen. All those images are the same now. So let me change that. And then back to mobile. Yes. Optimize for all devices. Update. I'm happy with the result. I hope you are too.
Let's keep this space because what I can do now, I can edit this page with Elementor. I can go over here to the update area and the arrow up. And I can save this whole page as a template and that's what I want to do. I call this one services page or services yeah page. Save it. There it is. Okay, I go back to the website and I go to the first service branding, edit the page, edit with Elementor, go over here, change it to full width, click on the folder icon, my templates, and I want to import the services page without the settings of the page. Great. So what I want to do over here, I'm at the branding page. I want to change the title to branding is super important. I don't know how to come up with a better text right now. I can remove this if I want to. I can get rid of this. I want to have three arrows over here. So I get rid of this one. I go to the first one. Because first I want to go for the brand scan. Can get rid of this and of this also here i also want to get rid of the images after that we'll talk about branding strategy And then the third thing, logo and branding. I want to tell a little bit more about what the order is and how we work. So that's it. Update. And now I want to save this page. I call this one specific service page. So it's not the overview page. It's a specific service page. So I can go to web design. Let me first go back to the website. To web design, we do the same thing. Edit page. Edit with Elementor. Go to the settings. Make it full width. Click on the folder. My templates. Specific service page. Don't import the settings. And I just started changing everything. Web design. Web design is super important. The first thing we need to do is wire framing. Then UX, UI design, and then UX design. Change the text and you're good to go. The same we do with the development page and the optimization page. Then if you take a look with copying and pasting, we created this page. And four of those pages over here, I can get rid of the upper line. So that's what you can do when you work with copying and pasting with an Elementor. Let's create the contact page. So I click on contact. I edit the page, edit it with Elementor. I go to the settings, make it a full width page. Click on the folder, go for the title, I insert it, don't apply the settings. I change this to contact. Then I want to create a new area with two columns. Change the background to the bluish one. And then in the first area over here, I want to have the background color to be a white one. Then I want to go to this container here at the left, go to the style and make the background color white. Then I want to duplicate this area, drag it over here, change the color to dark one. And then below I want to have a form. How can we do that? I click on the eye and I go to the back end. I want to create a contact form and I need a plugin for that. So I go to plugins, add new. And I search for 
contact form seven. Really simple form builder. Install now. Activate it. Now I go to the contact area, the contact forms, and by default, there already is a form. So I want to copy this because that's how we can embed the form in our website. I copy the short code. I go to the website or over here. I go to all the elements and I drag this here below. I go to the text and then I select everything and I paste the code. I click on update. And there it is. If you want to learn how to create a special form using Contact Form 7, go to YouTube and search for Contact Form 7. And there's my tutorial. It's still relevant. I will make a new one, but it's still relevant. And then you can take your form to the next level. I go back over here to the container to advanced and I increase the padding to 30. So we have a little bit more space over here. Now people can fill in this form. Then over here, I want to go to the style, to the border, uncheck this, let's say at the left and turn this to 50. Why? So I can see which corner is affected and that is this one. So I bring it back to 20 and then at the top, I also say, I say 100 and I see this area is affected. You don't see that well, but I see it enough to know that it is that part. Then I go to this area, style, background type, choose a color and I choose the dark green color. I duplicate this area and I make this text white. And I say, this is about web divine LLC. And also here I go to the container. I want to have a padding of 30 pixels. Great. I go back to the title and I want it to be this one. And then below, I want to have a text area. The text can be white. And I want to tell something about my company. First, I want to start with the address. I want to say shift enter. If I say enter, I start a new paragraph. I want to say shift enter. So I go to new line. Shift enter the Netherlands. Okay. I update it. Then I want to duplicate it. And over here, I say something about my company. The LC number, my vet ID number, and my bank account number. Okay, I want to do the same trick as I did before in the tutorial. So I go to the homepage. I edit it with Elementor. And then I go over here to the text. Where is it? The palette one, span, copy. I go to the text, paste, paste and paste. And then let me see over here, I would say, Close the span. But I want to close it right after this area. Also here and also here. Go to the visuals. Okay. Now I want to go to all the elements. I search for an icon list and I drag it here in between. Let me get rid of those two. I go for the first one. I want to show my email account. So I say info at wearewebdivine.com. I change the icon to a envelope. I go to the style, to the icon, and I make the icon orange, yellow, Make the size a bit bigger. Also for the text, I want to go for a bigger text. And then at the color, I say white. Then I duplicate it twice. Because over here, I want to say something about my website. I 
and I change this to an address icon and the third one is a phone number. Like that. I want to update it. Take a look. So we can make this form better. If you follow the tutorial, this is how it looks. I think it looks nice. And then I want to go over here. I will first go over here to the style border. Top and left. So I need to go to the, those two. Style border and uncheck it and I say 20 and 20. So we have those writing roundings over here and over here and here. Click over here on the container and you know what I want to do. 60 and 60. Then I go to the tablet view. 60. And then I go for the smartphone view. And over here I say 30. And then at the, the edge, I can go to the border. And I can decide to go for, let's say, 20 and 20. And 0 and 0. Let's see what, which area is okay. This also okay. And over here, border 20 and 20. Here you see it better. So let's see. Yeah, I got the right two, and then over here, I also got the right ones. Yeah, so there are those roundings. And also here or details and people can leave their form from their phone and that makes our website almost complete we've created all the pages we want to create and of course it can be that you want to create different pages as well by now i hope you know how to build things in elementor so what is next so we've created quite a few pages congratulations with that if you're still here I respect that. Thank you. Because the longer you watch, the better my video will perform in YouTube. So thank you. If you're not watching this on YouTube, maybe you should consider, hey, maybe I should go to YouTube to the original owner and watch Fergie's video instead of downloading this from a pirate website. And <laughs> that happens all the time. <laughs> no, no, it's not happening. I forbid it. I have a whole team of lawyers. No. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the footer. Let's create a footer using the Bloxy theme. Now I want to take a look at the footer of our website. Right now we have this and I want to add some more stuff so I can go to the customizer, click and paste down. There it is. So I go to the footer. Let's start with this area. What I prefer to do here at the footer, I want to go to the design tab, decide that the background is dark, but even darker. Yeah, and I'll go to the copyright area. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to select it. So you need to click a few times. I go to design font color, get white logo colors can be orange. When you hover over it, they become green. I don't want that. I want them to become white again because our background is already green, even though it's a different green, but still. Okay, I'm okay with the, the, the font size. I go to general, I remove this area and I can say web divine and I can bring it to the center and that's all for the bottom row. I want to go for the middle row. I see nothing yet. Well, first I want to make it four or equally divided. I go back and I need to create or drag an area over here in order for it to pop up. So there it is, widget area two, widget area three, and the fourth one, I want to show some 
socials. There they are. So I go to the background of the middle row to design and I change the background to the green one like that at the middle row again at the design. I want the title fonts to be white, the font color to be white. Row top divider. Okay. And then full width. Make it orange and three pixels. So it doesn't matter if you have a light background below or a dark one. There's a nice separation over here. So, so far, so good. Okay. Okay. Widget area one. I click on it. Sometimes hard to click on it. Yeah. I got this and then I click on the plus and now I can add everything that I can add in the WordPress editor. So I search for an image. There it is. I go to the media library and I go for my light image on a dark background. There it goes below. I can have more stuff. I can have text over here. So let me go to dummy text generator. Get a nice text about our company. There's a caption or I click on the plus. I go for a paragraph and I paste it. There it goes. I can bring it to the center. To the left, I can bring it low down or up. Right now you don't see that because it's taking up all the space. So that's widget area one. At the widget area two and three, I want to have two menus and I need to create those. So let me publish this. And then I go back and back. I go to menus. I create my first menu. Call this one legal. And I'm not going to place it anywhere. So I click on next. I want to create a new few pages. The first one is privacy policy. The second one is cookie policy. I use cookies on my website. The third one is GDPR. And the fourth one, DCMA. Publish. Then I go back and I want to create a new menu, a second menu. Legal. Next, I want to create two more pages for that. The first one is terms and conditions. And the second one is terms of use. Of course, you can place something else over here. Nice links to your services, whatever you want. I publish it. Then I go back, go back and then I go to the widgets. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry to the footer. Go to widget area two. Click on the plus. I search for a menu navigation menu with the title legal. Then I select legal. There it goes. Then the widget area three, click on the plus search for the menu. And I go for legal, legal two. And I forgot widget area one is not about legal. It's about privacy, your privacy. Great. What I can do at design of this whole um, middle row design, I can change the widget font. I can change the size. 14 is okay. I can change the title font. Choose Nunito. Sans. There you go. Make it bolder. Like that. And I want to go to my socials. To design icons. Let's make them white. When you hover over them, you can make them orange. But first I go to general and I want to adjust a few things. I want everything to open in a new tab. I can change the icon size. But what I want, I want to change things from horizontal to vertical. And I want to show labels. And then I need to go to design again and change the font color to white. 
for this text. And I click over here or the three dots and I get rid of the capitals. And I use a regular font, just like everything else in the footer. If I want to add more links, by the way, if I hover over it, it becomes blue. Never. Better. If I want to um, add some accounts, I can uh, click over here. Okay, now I can add some things. So my email. Facebook. You can add your uh, link over here. What else? Let's see. I have Instagram. I have LinkedIn. People can reach me on Skype if they have questions. On WhatsApp and on YouTube. I publish it. I go back. Let me click over here. And I go over here and I search for those. So uh, which one? Email. Click on the plus. What else? LinkedIn, click on the plus. WhatsApp, and then YouTube. There you go. Keep in mind, uh, don't make it too crowded. So what do you really use? Maybe you don't use WhatsApp or Twitter. Can't get rid of those. And then we have our footer over here. Close it. And then it will look like this. I'm okay with this. You can change the text over here. But here, look at this. If I hover over it, I don't want this to happen. So I go back to the customizer. I go to the footer. Scroll down. Okay, what I do? I go to the middle row, settings, to design. And look at this. If I hover over it, I want it to be orange. Sorry, uh, I want it to be white. If I uh, hover over it, then orange. Great. And what I also can do over here, socials, design, the icon color, it stays white. That's what I prefer. Publish, close it, page down. There you go. And also, uh, if I go to a different page, the about page, it looks like that. If I go to the services page and I enter with a lighter area, also then it still looks fine. Oh, it's still a dark area, but it doesn't matter if this is the latest area because of this beautiful orange line, there's a nice separation, which makes this footer look great everywhere. There's the height over here. If I want to change that, I go to the customizer, to the footer and I go to the copyright area. And at the text, I go to the text area and I remove the P and the P and look at this. When I do that, there's a beautiful height. That's what I prefer. And now it looks even better. Go to the customizer. Let's take a look how it looks on a smartphone or a tablet. Tablet view. Okay. For the tablet, I like to bring this to the center. Socials. Center. And also the first area. Bring it to the center. And then for the smartphone, it looks like this. Perfect. Close this. And now your website is optimized for all 
devices. Both the header, the content, and the footer. So we're coming to a close, but further there's so much more we can do. Yes, there is. But for that, I have different tutorials. So if you want to create a portfolio within your website, I have a different tutorial for you. You can watch it over here or you go to the description of this video. You can find it. So um, if you want to do that, be my guest. I'm still here. Yes. Why? The same story is for the blog page. I have a beautiful tutorial where I show you step by step how you can create a blog page and optimize it and do research. And uh, I will make a new one, but the one I have already is great. And there you can learn step by step how to create a blog post. Why would you create a blog post? Well, if you create a blog post that will be that can be found on the Internet and then when people find the things you're writing about, which is probably the same thing as the service you offer. So if I'm writing about an email service I can provide for people, I can write a blog post about email services and then people find me on the Internet and they think, hey, Ferdy can help me because he has a lot of knowledge about the subject and I don't want to do it myself. So I will reach out for Ferdy. So it's actually a way to get organic visitors to your website. If you want to watch this video, let me show you where you can find it. In order to find that video, you can go to the description of this video or you go to YouTube and then you tap, of course, and then we search for how to write a blog post and then 30. There it is, five months old. I will make a new one. But this one is great. And then you can learn how to write a blog post, optimize it, do market research, all that stuff. So good luck with watching that. So there is actually so much more to cover. You can create a web shop. You can start with affiliate marketing. You can optimize your website for the Google search results. Well, let me show you the tutorials I want to show you that you can follow after this one so you can get even more out of your website. Okay, people, let's go back to youtube.com. You're already there, but in a new tab. So what else can you do? Well, if your website is finished, you need to optimize it for all search engines. And you can do that through the rank math tutorial. I think I'm at number one. Complete rank math tutorial 2022. Two hours long on how to be found better in the search results. What else? If you want to sell things on the internet, search for WooCommerce tutorial. If you don't find me, just say Ferdy after that, Ferdy. There it is. <laughs> for our tutorial on how to create products, different kind of products and link them with your payment method, calculate the shipping, add coupon codes, etc. Really valuable tutorial valuable tutorial if i can say so myself then if you want to build an email list convert kit tutorial 30 how to build an email list from scratch it made me more than two hundred thousand dollars of course that's not true this clickbait no it is true wow how great is that it's crazy what you can do with email marketing so in this tutorial i'll show you how to build an email list how to create broadcast emails give something in exchange for an email address I show you some numbers on how much money you can make with that. And then last but not least, affiliate marketing tutorial. And then there's so much competition. I say 30. Affiliate marketing tutorial for beginners from zero to 1 million. And it can be even more depending on how much effort you put into it. Six hour tutorial, then another six hour tutorial. This one is a complete uh, course about affiliate marketing. This one is specific for making a website. And then there's the third one, two years old. It's a shorter one, three and a half hours on a website also. So you can choose one of those. It seems, I think this one is better than this one, but this one is too long. So I think it scares people away. I need to stop talking because also this tutorial is becoming quite long. So let's wrap it up. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for arriving at this part that means that you've watched the tutorial or you skip to the end and to see what i have to say because sometimes in the end i make really good jokes and people go to the end of the video that's a joke <laughs> um okay so thank you for watching this video feel free to like the video and to subscribe for more upcoming tutorials and if you have any question feel free to leave a comment uh, feel free to do whatever you want as long as it's in the boundaries of the principles that we use worldwide not stealing and stuff yeah, I'm trying to be funny. It's not working. Where is it? 
What else? Let me go to my notes. Um, yeah, as I said, there are a few follow-up tutorials. I will also show you over here. And there's a subscribe button. You can subscribe for more upcoming tutorials. I would love that only if you want to. Because if you subscribe and you do nothing with watching my tutorials, then YouTube thinks I'm a bad channel and I will rank worse. For me, it's all about growth. I also grew in pounds. <laughs> so that's it. And bye-bye. Uh,